go party going on in the green room, Fuzzy. That's nice. Like trying to get to the Playboy Mansion sometimes. Why don't you run out there with some uh, cherries and whipped cream and drop <laughs> trout? Could I win? Am I eligible? Hey, did Opie already go home? I want him to sh uh, show him the uh, Camp Krusty pictures <laughs> out of Architectural Digest. Get to work, kids. I, I, I would ask now, Al, don't go near him because he hates you. What a ranch. If we see Al get shoved real hard through the window, we yeah, know. Yeah, Al, don't go near him. We'll know that he went near Opie. Yeah. It is the uh, Ron and Fez show. I just heard that uh, Britney commercial, Fez. Is this Sunday night? Yeah, I guess so. Britney Spears live in Las Vegas. Sounds like a spanking show to me. Vegas, baby. Get that A spell. <laughs> Uh, you know, here's the problem with that. It all seems like it's going to be sexy, and then you have to sit through our music. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, her new album came out this week, Britney Spears' album, Fezzi. An amazing amount of copies sold, like 750,000, 800,000, but still far less than her last album, First Week Sales. Right. Uh, with the teen sensation numbers, like yeah. the Backstreet Boys, when their CD came out months and months ago, not quite what Millennium did either. Right, exactly. Like, uh, and same with NSYNC. Right. They didn't do as good uh, previously. So all the pop stars are uh, falling off. So are the winds of change a blowing? Right. Now the uh, king of pop, who uh, did Fezzi a fabulous show the other night. We simulcast it. His uh, 30th anniversary. 30 years touching hearts, touching kids. That was the name of that? Yeah, Michael Jackson. Was. I was surprised too. I was shocked. His uh, album now down to number three. Ooh. And I believe it's only like something like 200,000 copies sold this week. Okay, someone doesn't have another thriller on their hands. No, it doesn't look, <laughs> unless it's a slow growth period, was which we're all hoping. <laughs> He's hoping for a spurt. It's one of those, than one. Uh, you know, word of mouth builds is uh -huh. what we're hoping for this. Yeah, that's what Michael Jackson needs. Yeah. But I thought he was invincible, Ronnie. No, no, he uh, <laughs> probably shouldn't have called the uh, record Invincible. Probably better name, Vincible. Oh, yeah. Vin I'm, I'm Michael Jackson. I'm pretty Vincible. Extremely Vincible. So he's behind Britney Spears and a Pink Floyd Greatest Hits. Right. Which everybody's right. And not where the king of pop wants to right. be. Exactly. Not where Mr. Vincible. Not so invincible. Uh, yeah. Uh, probably, um, touchable at this point. <laughs> Catchable? Unsteady. Would be a nice <laughs> name for the record. Vulnerable. Teetering. <laughs> Sickly. This is my new, um, teetering. <laughs> Poor Michael Jackson. So that's, uh, yeah. somewhat disappointing. Unlistenable. Yeah. Might be another name for it. Unlistable Michael Jackson. <laughs> I'm unlistenable. He's back and no one cares. He's Michael Jackson. Or we could just go with not in stores at all. Instead of invincible. Not in stores at all. Actually, unsellable. The, yeah, unsellable is better because the thing is in stores, it's just crates of it. Right, yeah. They're using it to prop open uh, the doors in the back. Right. So, you know. Not black at all? This, well, not black at all. Yeah, that's not bad. I don't know what is uh, fading faster right now, Fezzi. It's, is it his career or his skin? I don't know what. Maybe but, that's it. People just don't know it's Michael Jackson. The, they, uh, they see this album. They don't know it's Michael Jackson on the cover. Here's uh, Sean. Sean, you're on the uh, Ron and Fez show. How you doing, buddy? Hey, hey. Sean. Hey, fellas. Big ass ninety six twelve. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Hey, I've got a good, uh, a good, good, uh, a good name for the album. What's Unrecognizable. That? Unrecognizable. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> you know, if we didn't know, he probably could walk through the streets pretty easy now. Yeah. Compared with the uh, thriller, Michael Jackson. We would just think, oh, that old lady needs a nurse. Why isn't someone with her? Right. All right, he had Thriller before. Why didn't he just go with Duller? Oh, yeah, that's good. If he re-releases it, he could call it Blacker. Because he was darker then. Darker. Darker. <laughs> no, wait, he's whiter. 
lighter. Whiter shade of pale, I should just call it. <laughs> my skin is a whiter shade of pale. It's my <laughs> own personal salute to Poco Harum. I'm Michael Jackson. Because I'm whiter. White as spunk could be the name of it. He should actually reform cream himself. I have never understood why Thriller just wasn't called Toucher. <laughs> that would have been nice. Hey, here's uh, Tom. Tom, you're on the uh, Ron and Fez show. Hey, hey, how you doing, guys? How yeah. about uh, how about Unconvictable for the title? That I nice. like. That works. Unconvictable. And, and it, he, he's just uh, <laughs> he's standing next to OJ. There, Unconvictable. So it's a rough time. Oh yeah, but you know he's out of jail, so that's the important part. That's what he wants. <laughs> Well, in the big scheme of things, that's what you're going to want. You know, maybe he should have saved this th title for bad. <laughs> then people would have believed him. <laughs> Just bad. So bad. Really, really bad. Very, very bad. Sweet Lord in Heaven is this bad. <laughs> Michael Jackson, 2001. <laughs> this is so bad, I should be in jail. <laughs> hey, uh, Keith. Keith, you're on Run of Fez. Hi, Keith. Hey, what up, guys? Yeah. Big ass card holder, 9313. Thank you very much, sir. How about Unstoppable, considering he is the king of pop? I don't know. Uh, I think he missed the point of the bit, but okay. Yeah. Thanks for calling. And he kind of yeah. got stopped this week. He right. called the number three behind Pink Floyd. <laughs> uh, he's pretty stoppable. <laughs> hey, uh, Barry. Barry, you're on a fez. Hi, guys. Yeah. Instead of uh, bad, worse. Worse. I like the idea of that. <laughs> Even worse. Has anyone ever used the uh, name Pathetic for an album? I doubt it. I'm sure it's available. <laughs> There's no copyright on Pathetic. Hey, uh, Paul. Paul, you're on a fez. Hello? Hey, Paul. Hey, what about instead of Thriller, Thrill Him? Thrill Him. Thrill Him. Thrill Him. Try to, time to thrill me. All right, yeah. thanks. But now, with his skin, he's the Thriller in Vanilla. Thriller? <laughs> I was the Thriller, now in Vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> the Vanilla Thriller. Maybe he should be back as Vanilla Ice. Perfect. Eight blonde on blonde. My skin color. 877-692-1027. Andrew, Andrew, you're on Ironic Fez. Hey Andrew. Guys. You notice the lighter his skin got, the less his album sold? I did notice that. That's true. Yeah, when he was dark as the Ace of Spades back in the day, you know, he sold a lot of albums. Right. Ace of Spades, not a bad name for an album. Yeah, you know, he couldn't go in Bayonne either. No, of course not. Hey. So, so. But it does, it seems like he's made a huge mistake. <laughs> hey, uh... And they're all laughing, listen. <laughs> does that them? The public's just laughing at him. <laughs> hey, uh, Mike, Mike, you're on a Fez. Hey, Mike. Hey, what's going on? Uh, get your hands off the wall, on the wall instead of off the wall. Hands on the wall. <laughs> Up against the wall. Up against the wall. Up against the wall. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, save it. All right, this sent him by the heckler, Fuzzy. What if he just calls it the Jackson Five Year Old Kid Toucher? Perfect. That's so awful. <laughs> <laughs> but we're all a little disappointed for the king. Yeah. Because uh, you would have thought there would have been something there. This was going to be the comeback. This is going to be the big thing. Right. Tie it in with a TV special. McCauley's back by his side. Who can stop him? Well, now we found out. It's Pink Floyd and Britney Spears. Uh, Scott. Scott, you're on Run Fez. Hey, Scott. How you doing? How about monkey crap? <laughs> that ain't going to work. <laughs> no one's going to call their <laughs> album monkey crap. Jesse, you're on Run of Fez. Thanks. Fez, love the show. Thanks, buddy. All right. You've been hit by, you've been hit by the smooth pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> you've been touched by, you've been licked by a smooth pedophile. I never even understood that whole smooth criminal thing he went through either. Right. I don't, he wants to be in jail, I guess. All right. Uh, I guess Dan from Hoboken is writing to us that he wrote a commentary of the downfall of as he puts it, Wacko Jacko's career. Oh. But then it goes Foundry Music Net Magazine, Display Column, blah, blah, blah. The list goes on and on. I need an easier link than that, Dan. 
Or just call in. And we'll yeah, call and tell us what you said in this yeah. article. And then plug it. In Architectural Digest. Hey, uh, Scott. Scott, you're on our round of Fez. Hey, Scott. Hey, how you doing? Uh, you should call it non-profitable. <laughs> <laughs> not profitable. I don't know if that's uh all right, he had the dangerous album. Right. All right. What about hideous? We just call it hideous and there's a close up of it. <laughs> Ponderous. Ponderous always works. Hey uh Scott, Scott, you're on Run of Fez. Hey Scott. How about inconceivable and inconsolable? <laughs> inconsolable. <laughs> I just have a small child crying. <laughs> Incestual. <laughs> I like that. I like incestual. Yeah, we know it, Mike. Mm -hmm. You're the baddest. Hey, who's bad? You, Mike. Please, no trouble. Freddie, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Freddie. Hey, card holder 6701. What can we do, <laughs> for you, buddy? Well, instead of off the wall, uh, how about white as a wall? Could be, you could sell the album at the uh, Sherwin Williams store. <laughs> That I like. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Freddie. Right. With Dangerous, uh, could have been named Dangerous to Listen to While Driving Heavy Machinery. I never get it anymore, you know. Hey, Tom, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Tom. Ron. Ron. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. How about a uh, subtitle? An album so bad, Weird Al Yankovic wouldn't even make fun of it. Maybe he should start uh, parodying uh, Weird Al stuff. That actually yeah. sounds better now. <laughs> See it. Hey, uh, it comes back singing like a surgeon. Hey, uh, Baron, you're on Ron Fez. What's up, guys? Hey, yeah. Baron. What about? Uh, I know this album has been already used, but what about the White Album? <laughs> white Album too. <laughs> the really White Album. And it's actually, if you look album. at them, maybe it would make more sense to just cover Coldplay's <laughs> Yellow. <laughs> the <laughs> Now I'm White Album. <laughs> look, I'm White Album. <laughs> Damn, am I white album. Uh, Kevin, you're on Ron Hey, uh, Ron Fez, what's going on? Yeah. Hey, Kevin. Hey. Uh, instead of beat it, how about uh, beat it with the hammer? I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. Uh, hey, uh, Rob, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Rob. Hey, Ron Fez, card holder 8171. <laughs> how about... Uh, Come touch this. See ya. <laughs> Come touch this. Come touch this. <laughs> it's a little blunt, but okay. 877-692-1027. Ray, you're on Ron of Fez, buddy. Uh, yeah. Hey, how about the return of Skeletor? <laughs> Doesn't even make sense. <laughs> he is back. <laughs> it's a comeback. I am back, but this time as Skeletor. <laughs> Fez, here's somebody who always helps us out. Uh, from Sesame Street, it's Foul Mouth Elmo. Oh, good. Hey, Elmo. Hey, you okay? Hello, oh. Foul Mouth Elmo. Yeah, I don't know this Michael Jackson guy. He's way before my time. Sure, you're just a child. Yeah, yeah. But, um, why don't you put him next to a white background and call it Invisible? Invisible? Yeah. That's cute. Hey, you can't see that mother... All okay. right. Watch the language, <laughs> Foul Mouth you know, you Elmo. Say stuff like that, Elmo. Yeah, he boy sucks. His uh, basketball sucks too. All right, that's a different one, I think. Uh, who's that? Michael Jordan. Ah, so they're not the same guy? No, no, no. They're not. One's black. Ah, so one plays basketball, and another does what? He uh, sings, sings and dances, and, yeah, performs. Ah, now I see. I see everybody. All right, bye bye. <laughs> now he sees Ronnie. Yeah, now he understands. He's just a baby. Well, you have to teach him. Yeah. You do. He's just a baby. 877-692-1027. All right, here's off the uh, instant feedback. Oh, Ronnie, uh, are we hung up with Elmo? Yeah. Joe Pooh comes into the room. Oh, hello, Joe Pooh. Hello. It's not odd. They're never in the room together. Right. I don't understand. All right, here's one uh, on the instant feedback from uh, Burnt uh, Rail here, Fezzy. Uh, ain't going to be selling nothing. <laughs> ain't going to be, be selling, selling nothing. nothing. All right, Pantera said in, uh, Michael Jackson unnosed. I <laughs> <laughs> also thought the Inhuman album. Here's Andreas sends in the King of Pap. 
Lord of the Unzip Flies. All right, that I doesn't that, work. Uh, I don't even understand. <laughs> That's uh... no, that has nothing to do with music. It's All literature. Right. Earl, you got one for us? Is that no, a... I don't have one. I just got a phone call from a, a couple of friends of mine that work at Epic Records. Yeah, they're like. Ron and Fez are killing us. We shipped a million and a half <laughs> units in less than a week. They shipped them. They shipped the thing gold. It's coming back platinum. Get the hell out of here. No, but the truth is that they're going to sell a million records. Yeah, by, but the money they spent on it. Yeah, right. Michael's going to buy them all. <laughs> Tell Epic not to worry because they're going to end up owning all the Beatles stuff. That's right. true. They're I mean, going to get they everything. The album's number one in every That's country. That's going to be one great garage sale Michael Jackson has. <laughs> I think the album's number one in every country except Spain. What is? Invincible. And uh, in America? Well, it was number one. <laughs> it fell behind the greatest hits package. What are you going to say? Pink Floyd still rules. <laughs> Who is running this? Is Epic running this show? Earl <laughs> runs down here? No, I just thought... Uh, was... These two do not speak for <laughs> WNEW. No, I just thought it was funny. It was just like... No, he, he, he they were cracking up, but they were just like, yeah. he's killing us. They're killing us. <laughs> Michael Jackson's going to go broke from this album, being moonwalking without any <laughs> shoes on. I would love for him to lose the Beatles songs, though. It's a possibility. You used to moonwalk, didn't you, when you were younger? No. Never? Were Never. you more of a break dancer? No. Can you spit on your head? No, not without snapping my neck. Cool. Try it. <laughs> now, Paul McCartney doesn't even speak to Michael Jackson anymore, right? No. Because no. he touched him. He asked for a raise. <laughs> he touched uh, Paul's children. <laughs> he found Michael humping his uh, girlfriend's leg. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't know it. <laughs> she, but the leg it was, was in the, the other. The size of a small child. The and Michael got excited. The problem was the leg was in the other room. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> me stumpy. Me stumpy's getting stumped. <laughs> All right, here's uh, Jason. Maybe we're trying to help out Epic. Tell them the good You're news. Right. We're here for them. Apparently, someone's not invincible. And we're trying to rename an album, get boost some sales. What's wrong with Invincible? You guys. Hey, Jason, you're on a fence. Hi, Jason. I do for you tonight. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, paperweight? Paperweight, which would be nice because this way you own the CD. It'll keep your papers from hey, blowing away. It's nice and usable. Yeah. Usable. There you go. And powder. Powder. <laughs> he does look like powder. He is magnetic. We'll give him that much. I heard some woman call the ONA show the other day, and she said that Michael now looks like E.T. when he was dying. <laughs> it's that same shade. Right. You're right. He's kind of a lime sherbetish at this point. Hey, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, you're on the I would fence. love to get my walls What's done. What's going on, I boys? Hey, I got buddy. a title for the album. How about this one? Look on bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> Look on bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, uh, Mitch, Mitch, you're on the Hello, Mitch. Hey guys. Yeah. Seventeen eighty three here. Hoo I got the name of the next three albums. Oh okay. really? Yep. Return, Beneath, and Conquest. All right. That's the, Planet of the Apes. Those so. are the Planet of the Apes sequels. Oh, White I'm sorry. people are so scared of black people. All right, here's, bell. here's the instant <laughs> feedback agreeing with you and backing up Epic and said he shouldn't have released this on Epic. He should have released it on Septic. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm, I'm, septic records and dates. You listening? Hey, I'm not defending the guy. I, I got an album. How about this? Even Superman dies sometimes, but he doesn't change colors. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense, Joe. You're just being crazy. I don't know where your thought process begins and ends. Bam. No, we're here. I'd love to get in that head. Hey, uh, Eric, you're on Run of Fez. Yeah, I got instead of uh, the Doors album, Waiting for the Sun, yeah. you can have it name it, Waiting for Your Son. Waiting for <laughs> your son, <laughs> waiting for your son. <laughs> Love my kids. Love my kids, yeah. I'm not saying it's a bad CD. I'm just saying, personally, even I wouldn't snort lines off of it. <laughs> that, uh, and that's a first. Because Mike's picture is on the cover. You want to be able to see the Coke. <laughs> That's the problem. I always think someone laid out a line, and it's Michael. And just that very thin nose. <laughs> the problem. You could snort a kilo off that co off that nose. What did he just say? I studied. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brandon. Brandon, you're on Ron Fez. 
By the way, hey, uh, Brandon. Uh, is, oh, hey, guys, how are you doing tonight? I don't think so. Look at the look at the Camp Krusty pictures out of Architectural <laughs> Digest. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> that place is unbelievable. Hey, uh, Brandon, what's the story? What's going on, Brandon? Hey, guys. First time, long time. Thanks. Uh, I got one instead of the uh, movie Kiss the Girls. How about Lick the Boys? <laughs> the Boys. <laughs> See it. I finger bang wrote this, and he goes, well... What? They're so talented out there. I, I love them to death. He uh, said, why not just call it the Coaster? <laughs> the name of the CD is the Coaster. Coasting. Uncoastable. No, it's just a coaster that you sit on the bottom oh, of. Oh, okay. Earl left. That one made Earl leave. All right, Christian wrote in, he looks like somebody just opened the ark in front of him. <laughs> I guess that's uh, Indiana Jones a bit. Oh, okay. And he started to melt. Uh, drink coaster come in. Baby powder. Nice. These are rough. They're being rough. So Michael Jackson's new album, his CD Invincible, falls to number three quick. All right, supposedly this is uh, Patty from Epic Records. To straighten us out, Fuzzy, as well as she oh, should. Okay, good. Yeah. Do we have uh, any of the new one album to play for Patty? Do we have any of the Invincible? Or with this, uh, or any Michael right now? We'll just put on some Michael. But, uh, or would that just sound like the screams uh, of death <laughs> to her at this point? She's got to be upset. Hey, Patty. Hey, Hi, Patty. you guys are killing me. How you doing, man? I'm all right, man. How are you? Cool. Love All right, so, thanks. Now, Earl is telling us that the record is doing better than the sales would show. Absolutely. It's um, basically number one in every country in the world. You know what? We all knew that Britney was going to be number one this week. Uh -huh. I mean, 780,000 is unprecedented. And No, know, that's not true. Her last well, album sold more than this in right, the first week. But, but the economy right now, if you notice, a lot of records that are... Number one records are only scanning anywhere from three hundred to four hundred thousand. All right, what's the last time he really had a, a huge record? Thriller or Bad? I guess Bad was pretty big, right? Bad was a big record for yeah. Michael. Yeah. All right, so now we're going back what? Fifteen years? Easy. It's been about eight years since his last album. Right. But you have to realize too that you know what? We all know the mystique about Michael and all this other BS that people say, but. On Tuesday night, the CBS special yeah. was the biggest rated special in CBS in the last seven years. People may, people may be just want to check out what it looks like or whatever else have you. I say we put them on Saturday nights. Uh, there's an opening now every week against uh, Saturday Night Live. Perfect. CBS That's wants great. them. I wanted to see how big Macaulay had gotten, and I was really <laughs> impressed with that special. <laughs> it was uh, it was pretty wild. Is but, Bubbles I mean, dead? No, Bubbles is uh, like 300 pounds now, so he doesn't live in the house anymore. Really? Wow. And how much is Tito? You're thinking of LaToya. <laughs> how much is Tito weigh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but you guys are great. You're killing me. Uh, we love the publicity on Michael. And, you know, he's the only artist that can basically, um, how do I put this the right way? Change Doc colors? In Times, <laughs> Times Square. On, at the in-store. We had an in-store with 4,000 people there a couple of weeks ago also. Oh, is that right? I didn't even know that. Yeah. He could stop Chuck, get Chuck E. Cheese, this guy. <laughs> People love him. <laughs> but you guys are the best. We really do. I mean, hey, listen, I listen to you guys every night. You guys are great. And, and you know you know, we want Michael to get better, right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And I promise you, if the record goes double platinum, I'll get you a double platinum hanging your That house. would be great. Oh, that'd be excellent. Yeah. There you go. Or yeah. some tickets to Chuck E. Cheese. A double good. platinum. We might as well get us a picture of Fez's girlfriend. <laughs> Wait a minute, because <laughs> both are going to be a Bigfoot picture. All right, thanks, Patty. All right, bye. Thanks, Patty. Bye-bye, guys. All right. Patty Boy. from Epic Records. 4,000 people at an end store, Fuzzy. Hmm. I don't know about that. Now, this is Invincible. This is the track Invincible. Fuzzy, please, people are driving. <laughs> It's got to have a NyQuil label on it. Is it skipping, Hawk? Is it skipping? No, this is uh, the, the good thing. This is oh, good. it is? Yeah. Oh. Okay, I'm going to go listen to this in the restroom. They're out of toilet paper. 
All right, hey, uh, Joe. Huh? Joe, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Joe. Hey, what's going on? What do you say, buddy? Why don't you name it after a Pink Floyd album? Name it White Side of the Coon. All right. Hey, yeah. People are so scared of black people. That is just wrong. Joe Pooh, quit laughing. I'll never put up with racism on this show, Fuzzy. No, that's when you get Andy DeFranco. Hey, we got something to give out tonight, too. That's right. I don't know how we're going to do it yet, but we're going to give away an MP3 player. A Samsung, yep, MP3 player. Samsung and CompUSA want to show you the latest in digital technology. You can visit the new Samsung store at the CompUSA location in Manhattan, 425th Avenue, and experience the latest digital convergence products. Also, one of those, if you were doing a song parody contest... Whatever happened to you doing song parties? I thought you were going to do some, Joe Pooh. Oh, yeah. I was going. I'm working on a couple. Yeah. Well, you can't be in the contest, but I yeah. want you to try to get one done. All right. Uh, also, uh, you go to the football pool at ronfez.net. Sure. Play ronfez.net's football pool. You win this week. You pick up the Samsung Yep MP3 player. Tomorrow night on the show, uh, girls' pajama party. Girls' sleepover. Yeah. Big slumber party going on. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Now, who all is invited? Who's coming to our slumber Please. party? Anybody who shows up in panties is invited. I'll huh? do it. Not you. Not we've those we've seen your panties. I don't want you in the dingy drawers. Oh, well, also tonight, uh, you know what? Maybe we ought to do it early tonight, Fuzzy. Polo. Polo. Oscar Blaves. He wants to talk about Harry Potter, and that's the, uh, the big movie of the week. Mm -hmm. We already got our tickets to go tomorrow afternoon. I can't wait for Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Now, this may be the biggest... Uh, Weekend of any movie, right? Yeah. So, what was the, what's the biggest opening so far this year? Do we know? I guess oh, Polo know. Yeah, it's got like be like sixty two million, I think, or maybe even higher for Mission Impossible. I think it was. Oh, okay, from the summertime. Yeah, yeah, that was a big movie opening. All right, and Shrek is the biggest movie of the year so far. Shrek will, you know, will probably close out the year. Yeah. Uh, so that'll be kind of interesting, Fez, just to go out and see it and. And see if it matches up to the hype. How can it? Because At this point. And also, we'll be getting the uh, another Star Wars trailer at the beginning of it. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I think I read that on uh, Box Office Guru. So, if you go to movies at all, this seems like the start of the big Christmas movie season comes a little earlier this year. Sure, excellent. I'm all in favor. No, normally it's next weekend, right? The Thanksgiving Day weekend. Right, where something big opens. Yeah. And that'll probably be another weekend of Harry Potter mania. And then the following week, it should get replaced by Lord of the Rings. When that comes in. Which more, I, more fantasy and magic I know, for us. You know, I've never read the Lord of the Rings gimmick. We were supposed to, and I never read it in school. Yeah, it's They normally, handed it to us. Right, it's normally a school thing. I just don't read. All right, so uh, we'll come back with Polo. Do we already have him, Al? Do I feel like I can count on you? Polo to be talking about uh, Harry Potter coming up next on Ron and Fez. Ron and Fez. 1027 WMU. It's time for Roscoe Blurbs with Polo. Monsters Inc. will be scared of the Roscoe's. Kevin better make some space here on the shelf for another Oscar. <laughs> Anthony Hopkins to the Oscar seat. What is Oscar? We're out of Fez. Time to check out what's new at the box office. That's going to be Harry Potter. We got Polo standing by. Yeah, no sense in talking about any other movie than right. uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, mm. Fuzzy. That opens tomorrow nationwide on now, a huge amount of theaters, I guess. Now, I asked Al to check out what the uh, biggest uh, opening weekend was this year. He didn't come back with anything. But instant feedback lets me know that it is... Uh, the Planet of the Apes movie made $68 million. Oh, okay. All right. So you think... And then can... really went nowhere Yeah, it went that. nowhere after that, but yeah. it opened, you know, a gigantic. And that's what happens with uh, movies now. Well, here's Paul Lowe. Paul Lowe! Hey, Paul Lowe, you like some movies. You like some movie, hey, Paul Lowe! you like some movie! Yeah, actually, there's a lot of movies opening this week, but like you say, it's going to be all about Harry why Potter. Why bother with anything else? Well, yeah, there's going to be a lot of overflow. Probably everyone will do nicely, but they, they're talking about this being the biggest opening of all time. And now, how big would that have to be? Like seventy-two million? Well, yeah, I mean, it was. It, I think it was seventy-four, seventy-two, something like that. And by and, who? Uh, you know, and that's just for the weekend. Then there's the week, and you know. I understand so, that. Who had the biggest opening weekend? Uh, I think it was uh, Star Wars. Uh, date. Was, episode one, right? Episode one, yeah. yeah. 
Now, uh, that, uh, last that beat week... out the, the Jurassic Park 2, so, yeah, you know, they, 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 but they're talking about this overall being bigger than Titanic after it's all said. Yeah, I don't see that happening, though. Do you I don't pull... either, but, you know. I mean, that's just too big. People don't realize. Well, they what sold is... 110 million books in, like, a few years, so. Yeah, but you got to figure to the same people. That's true, but they're fanatics that go over and over again. Well, crazy. maybe. I mean, uh, the movie also has to be good. Now, last week, you were with your mother-in-law. You got her this week? No, no, no. Where's Who the hell are no, you? No, no, no. Who the hell are you? Wait a minute. Is that her in the background? I think no, it is. No, Who the uh, hell are you? I actually almost had to go over there tonight, uh, but she decided she's going to be fine by herself, and she's probably going to be drinking. But uh, I want to get her home number so we can call her throughout the week every once in a while. <laughs> and just right, get we'll her talk. take on different that's, that's current events. Really, but I don't know if that's going to work out, to be honest. With you because sometimes Gail will be over there and uh, then things will really go nuts. So, nah, we don't want to. Do that. your wife? So she can fit in the house. <laughs> yes, yes. Your wife's fitting in the house now? Yes. How yes. is Hagrid? Your, your <laughs> your <laughs> wife. As, as get. Hagrid, your wife! <laughs> the problem. She's been losing weight. Well, you're, uh, now, have you had a chance to see the preview of, of uh, Harry Potter? Of course. I've now, seen. well, Fezzi, look who's coming down. I see a broom coming this way. No way! That's Harry Potter. Hello. Hey, Harry, how are you? It's me, Harry Potter. Did you see Paul O was uh, on the phone with us? Hey. Oh, I could see. He's so big, I could see him all the way in New York. Right. Uh, uh, Paul O, what did you think of this film, this Harry Potter? Okay, first of all, stuff? you know, they're, they're saying two and a half hours. Is it too long? I mean, obviously, all of the people who have read the book, all these kids, they say they could watch a 10-hour movie, apparently, uh, from what I saw. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, I, I think it would be better if it was two hours, personally. So you think the movie may be a little too long? Yeah, but, but I'm saying it's not going to matter because nobody's going to be able to get into the theater except the fanatics. Because I think they're already already sold out, uh, most of the, the show. That's just crazy talk. <laughs> it's true. You know it's crazy talk, Paul. I know. There's not going to be some people taking their kids for the 1130 <laughs> showing. Right. You're going to be able to see it this I think weekend. it's opening at midnight or something. It's opening on 7,000 screens. There's going to be room. <laughs> I don't know. Except for your wife, Hagrid. <laughs> I don't know. And can Hagrid get a seat? What are you going to do? Buy two uh, two chairs for her? <laughs> Put a door between them? Usually if you sit in the front row, you can take those armrests up and take two seats. Nice. Does she usually go to the movies with you? Or is she no, just she griping the whole time? She stopped going a long time ago. Well, look, I can't talk about your wife. I night. Let's talk about the, the Harry right. Potter movie. That's not now, you, never, you never read the books, right? I actually did look through some of the books, and and I have to say that spanking. The, the one of the big pluses is is the author J.K. Rowling is is a tremendously imaginative person. She comes up with stuff all the time. Now there's a great cast. That's why of, she's a writer. Yes, mm -hmm. I understand, but unusually That's why J.K. will be rolling in Oscars this year. That's what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, J.K. will be rolling in the Oscars? Yes. Hey, gee, and gee, so gee. there's tremendously imaginative stuff. You have a big cast. Of course, the big possible villain in this thing is Alan Speaking Richard. Speaking of big cast, how's your wife's leg? Ugly. <laughs> As a, let's not get back to the wife. You got That's Richard, a lot of plaster. You've got Richard Harris. You've got Alan Reich. Uh, I've got now him. you've got me all flustered. And, and you know... Uh, Maggie Smith, uh, some of the the British names. There's no uh, nobody Wake up, British. Maggie! I think it's time to win an Oscar. G -g 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 -g. Wake up, Maggie! And of course, you remember Alan Rickman from no, Die Hard. I and never uh, had the chance to meet him. Robin, I hear Robin, he's delightful. Robin Robin Hood, Prince of Peace. He's, he's he plays a nice. Yippee ki yay, Mother Ruffa! You won an Oscar. <laughs> but the fact is, Yippee ki yay, they, Oscar Ruffa! Hey, <laughs> 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 Now, to a certain extent, this has got a lot of... What extent? I know you say there's an extent here, but how certain are we about this extent? Right. To a certain amount. There's a, there's the, big, the big exciting moment, I guess, or I should say extended scene, it's, it's similar to the pod race it's in the Phantom Menace, is the Quidditch. I, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. You're saying it right, yeah, Quidditch. It's like, is that right, Harry? Yes, it's Quidditch. Yeah, and how do you play that game, Harry? Oh, you use dice. <laughs> in a Monopoly board. You do not. <laughs> Harry doesn't it's know his a, own it's movie. It's kind of a rough, kind of a nasty rugby match on brooms, broomsticks. And uh, so, and it, it's fairly exciting. And I think that's Speaking of broomsticks, can we talk to your mother-in-law? No. <laughs> no. Who the hell are you? Uh, well, that's Paul O. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, you're not the only you person. You do all right, Dexter also saw this movie, and he wants to talk about it. Oh, good. Hey, Dexter, you saw this Harry Potter movie? 
Oh, uh, yeah, I saw it. Uh, this one's for you, Paul. Paul yeah, okay. Hip, hip, Murray. Go blah, go see Harry Potter. It's a surefire Oscar winner. <laughs> ga, ga, ga. Hip, hip, Murray. <laughs> now, of course, Chris Columbus directed this, and he is actually a pro. I think he's going to discover an Oscar. <laughs> get, 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 get. He's actually a protege of Spielberg. And, uh, Spielberg. He's got the Nina, the Benta, and the Oscar Maria. Good, good, good. That's what you're saying? No. I'm of just Chris saying, Columbus? No, I'm just saying that, you know, he's a protege of... of Columbus Day is Oscar Day. Good, 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 good. We're getting Chris Columbus to the Oscars. Good, good, good. And, uh, Get on the Columbus. He actually wrote Goonies and Gremlins years ago for Spielberg. And and Spielberg, it, this is actually a Spielberg type movie, because I mean, all Chris Columbus really did was like Home Alone and Mrs. Doubtfire, not exactly Harry Potter type material from the past. Yeah, well, well he's they, a director, so you change up. Yeah, okay, well it's about time, but I'm just saying Spielberg actually dissed him. And here's a uh, DJ. He saw the movie. Maybe you can explain it a little better than Paulo. Yeah, DJ, you saw this Harry Potter movie? Hey, uh, DJ. Yeah, and I say that it'll win a. Hogwarts Academy Awards. <laughs> 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 the Academy Awards. Now, of it's tough to do an Oscar blurb when your voice is changing. Cool. <laughs> Wait, Paulo, Craig saw the movie too. Oh, okay. oh, excellent. Finally, a good review. Oh, please. Uh, Craig, you're on uh, Rana Fez. Hi, Craig. 8914, what's up, Fez? Hoo Boo, Harry Potter, <laughs> witchy Oscar winner. Kick, 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 see ya. I, have no idea. I don't know. I was lost on that one. Where is he going, Fuzzy? You know? I don't know. Harry Potter's taking the Hogwarts Express all the way to the Oscars. <laughs> get, get, get. That was a little bit like. Filthy you Potter. are Harry Potter. <laughs> get, get, get. Get, get, get. He's got a louder voice. All right. Um, yeah. Here's some of the instant feedbacks. Columbus sailed the Oscar Blue <laughs> in 2002. <laughs> Thank you, Ralph. Let me read a couple more of these. They're coming in fast. Oh, <laughs> Harry will be using his broom to sweep the Oscars. Get, get, get. Get, get, get. Obviously. Here's Seven, who always has great stuff. Hocus Pocus, Abracadabra, Harry Potter's conjuring up some Oscars. And get, 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 get. This year, Oscar needs to take a wizard. <laughs> good, good, good. All right, here's card. Uh, here's card holder uh, forty-one, forty-one. Mike. Hoo-ha. This year, Harry will be sp- smoking a lot of pot to- on his way to the Oscars. Well, are- what? There's actually some bot movies this week too. But sources. Anyway. Trojan has this one. Sources say. That Harry Potter is going to be throwing some stones at the Oscars. G- 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 yeah, this one's for stones. From the instant feedback from Jason. Hello, Mother. Hello, Potter. Hello, <laughs> Harry. It's your Oscar. <laughs> g- 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 <laughs> it's br- it's bed knobs and broomsticks at the Oscars. G- 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 <laughs> what, Harry? We can't understand any of your characters. I'm <laughs> English. <laughs> but that's no reason to be soft spoken. <laughs> British. So the, you like this movie, Polo? Yes. I mean, obviously, I, I'm not going to go crazy because I'm not a Harry Potter fanatic. I'm just saying, I'll give it three and a half out of five stars. And, and, and what's, I, the, what's the uh, star and a half it missed? Well, what's the biggest pro- problem with the movie? Yeah, let's yeah. say that. Well, why why kept say? it from I, getting a perfect score? I think I think with, when they try to translate it from the book, they're almost too reverent, like this is the Bible or something that they're that they're translating. You so know, it's and, not and, good and, for and people say, who don't read the books. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, they, they they're very very nervous, very scared to do everything just perfect. So I mean, to, to a certain extent, there's not a lot of excitement. In some of the scenes, it's like they're just transcribing. I don't understand it. you, but Dominic saw the movie. Oh, oh good. Dominic, you saw this movie? What is? Good. Looks like Harry's going to find the Potter of Oscar Go. <laughs> get, 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 get. As, as I say, the well, big Well, Gene saw the movie too, Polo, not yeah. just you. Yeah. Oh. Gene, what do you think? Yeah, grab your goonies and pull out your Hogwarts. It's Oscar time. Get, get, get. Oh, yeah. These people know more about this movie than you, Polo. I am. All right, Irish Alki says this one. Mr. Wizard, give Harry the Oscar. Get, get, get. Now you have to know old TV show. <laughs> yeah, you really have to go back for that. Yeah, that's, that's back for that. Harry a lot of will co- win an Oscar. The sooner the potter. Get, 
Yeah, you, <laughs> you do realize there's a lot of controversy that the you know there's church groups you know uh, dead set against this movie there. Why? Because they're Wiccans? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm. They're, they're then why that, haven't they burned your wife yet? No, I'm saying that the sorcery uh, angle is uh, is is you know taps into that demonology. I don't think his wife is a witch because she would never have that big spot, pot of stew without just <laughs> drinking it. I don't understand you, Paulo, but Tommy saw the movie. Uh, hey, uh, Tommy, uh, you saw this Harry Potter movie? Harry Potter's gonna eat some tea and crumpets with Paulo's fat wife at the after. That may be my favorite. What's the high pitched voice? He's a boss fighting man! <laughs> Is that what you're saying, Paula? I don't even know what he was saying. He said Harry Potter's going to eat tea and crumpets with your fat wife at the Oscars. Oh, well, he, that's All right, so uh, you don't you don't like this? I'm not. Oh, you're with the Wiccans on this? You're anti-Christian? No. What are you I, saying? You're, you're I think it's. Oh, I think maybe it's you're happy that uh, our Lord was uh, killed at the at the cross. No. Oh, is I, that how you feel, Paula? No, Would you rather I, he was burned I, at the stake? I have. Uh, I'm perfectly uh, on Jesus' side, and I feel that it's okay to be on Harry Potter's side and Jesus' side at the like same time. Like Bush said, pick a side. Right. You're either with us or against us. Well, I'm just saying it's not Harry Potter. It's not the devil. He's just a nice. Kid who you know has got all these powers apparently. Polo will be at the Oscars with his sacrificial lamb. Gee, gee, gee. Harry, please, you don't even understand all this. <laughs> but they, you know, a lot of people are saying the that adults are talking. Who says? Who's saying this? Christ killers. Opening the door to the bad, to the dark side. Well, should we uh, start uh, taking all this Harry Potter stuff, build a bonfire and burn it? Maybe, is that, maybe that's the only thing. Old-fashioned book, old book burning? Is, is that, that what, what you want, Paulo? That's what, what you're calling I'm not, for? I'm, it's not what I want. I'm just reporting. I'm just trying you're to reporting? tell the truth. Of, I mean, what's happening out there. In the, in the, all right, here's Tim. Tim, you saw this movie, right? This Harry Potter? Yeah. And I think Harry better get off the pot or he'll miss an Oscar. Get, 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 get. Here's Paperboy. Lucky for us, he saw the movie. Oh, Paperboy. What do you hey, think? Yeah. Hey, actually, Jimmy Stewart saw the film. He said, Pottersville? Now you can call it Oscarville. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... Again, you have had to see any other movies, but it's good. All right, Mike saw this movie, too, and I think he agrees with you, Polo. Okay. Mike, you're on my defense. Hail Satan, Harry Potter's with an Oscar. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? No, I'm oh, saying nice, the Polo. Devil worship. Good. I'm saying the 700 Club had like an hour-long documentary on this. Tape that stuff for me. <laughs> I love when the 700 Club sees the devil somewhere. I just say. And then, you know what? They always end up apologizing. <laughs> well, They yeah, attack and attack and then come back and go, we really shouldn't have said that. Yeah, we were crazy that day. We were <laughs> yeah. all fired up. We were all upset and these things happen. Uh, so then they go, I guess it's okay if you do eat chicks. I don't I don't know why we were screaming the other night. Artie, you're on with the polo. Hello, Artie. Yeah, it sounds like Tom is going to pull an Oscar out of the stone. <laughs> God. Yeah, Everybody you know, makes more sense than you, Polo. Spielberg with that sorcerer's stone. It sounds like into Indiana. Polo, would you quit it? I'm trying to watch Harry Potter win an Oscar. Okay. Quit it instead of quit it. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that got him. Oh Way to smack him. Hey, Christian, you're on with uh, Paul Lowe, the Oscar man. Oh, good, a Christian. Yeah. <laughs> Harry Potter will carry a lot of Oscars. Get, 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 get. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Some pot. All right, here's Harry. Harry, you're on uh, with uh, Ron and Fez and Paul Lowe. Hello, gentlemen. How are you today? Hello. Oh, uh, Paul Lowe, how come you, you knock on my movie? And how come everyone's doing my voice as a high-pitched ten-year-old woman? You see, now, there's a lot of British people in this movie, and it's going to start getting... The British people are going to come out of the got to get somebody on the phones. So, what a... Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, this one about Polo. Harry Potter and the Salem Witch Trials go together like Tom Hanks and Oscar. Oh, boy. So, I mean, there are a lot of mo other movies out this week. Here's an I forget all the other movies. Okay. Here's Cancer Mike, he writes in. Harry Potter will be fighting a religious crusade for an Oscar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I just, I just don't think that the... I, I mean, know no you don't. don't. That's the problem. <laughs> right. You don't think before you talk. I'm just saying all the Christian kids... And then you come out condemning Christianity. No, I'm just saying the Christian kids are trying to have a stiff upper lip about this and, 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 and not... Oh, you're not touching the kids, are you? <laughs> no. What kind of lip? 
Stiff. He said kind of a stiff, British Ronnie. Language. I thought it was some normal type of lift. Oh. And they don't Polo, get... how's the dragon that's living in your wife's uh, mouth? No, is that working out? <laughs> <laughs> now, there are a lot of, but there's, like, there's a giant three-headed dog in this movie. In her mouth? No. The there's giant a... three-headed dog, Fluffy, in this movie, has better breath than uh, Polo's wife. <laughs> there's also a What's with her breath? What's going on with that? Is it from her kidney rot now? No. No, she's like, I actually got a large rash actually from the in uh, her the, throat. The oh, red from the uh, from the incision. But now, know. is she still drinking out of portalettes? No, no. Because I know that breath is just right, Paula. Now, I thought we were going to. She was drinking a scotch and turds when we called. <laughs> We've got eight movies coming out. Bartender, <laughs> another scotch and turds. <laughs> one bourbon, one, one scotch. One turn. <laughs> now, actually, Paul, our favorite drink is fartinis, right? Wait, I thought we were going to talk about Harry Potter. They've got breath. stink breath. There's the three-headed dog in the elder. They've got uh oh. Yes, her name's Mrs. Paulo. No. Every you know what she calls a burp? A, ma a mouth fart. Really? <laughs> it smells like it. It makes sense. Her mouth is actually considered her third armpit. <laughs> It's really disgusting. She's got Fumunda cheese under her tongue. Oh, oh, oh now room, I'm buckled. Me out right now. I can actually hear her in the other ear. What is she doing? She's saying she can't stand me anymore. So, People, where is I, she? Is she I, in the house? She's in the house. Yeah, I can I did stink breath on with us. I know. Oh, Here's no. the thing. People oh, can no, actually no, no, smell no. her breath over the phone. No, no you see, That's it, how strong it is. It has nothing to do with breath or, or anything else. It, it's just it's anger. Honestly, Paula. Get her to yell at you, Paula, please. Oh, she's looking at me now, actually, through the glass door. Just yell, just yell, what's your problem? Please. <laughs> she fogs up that glass. She's going to melt Believe it. Believe me, I don't want to get anything started. Paula, it's... let the listeners hear what she sounds like. No, right? because it'll be curse words right away. Well, we can dump out. No. Yeah, is, I, I, is it because you can't take the breath? No, I don't, I'm not. Let us wish her a happy Thanksgiving. I have enough stress, <laughs> honestly. Is it true when she licks an envelope, she leaves a skid mark? Now, what about Harry Potter? We got, got she has got, crap breath. Paula. She does. Got eight other movies. We got Steve Martin. I don't movies. want to get into that. I want to get into your wife. Where is she right now? No. Last no. year, her mouth had to be tented. No. That's bad. It is. That's bad breath. Can't we send a, a crop duster down now, the throat? I mean, crap maybe duster. we'll come up. Crap maybe, duster. maybe I'll discuss with her coming up. For, There's uh, mushrooms growing under her tongue. Oh. Seriously, I, the fruit she puts in her cereal is dingleberries. I might have dingleberry oh. crunch cereal. It's Paulo. disgusting. I Paulo, get some, her to yell at us, please. I might yeah. have some time in December to come up to to New York, and I mean, great, we'd have, love to have you. But I'm saying she'll have to come. All right, but why are vultures circling her mouth? Is there something dead in there? We'll get the trip, but you guys have to talk to us. Okay, right. I'm just saying we'll get the trip. If I mean, I haven't talked to her about coming to New York yet, and to be honest, I'm not sure if I can work it out with Murray and uh, my mother. Murray? You, know. you want to bring the whole gang up? I don't think they, because they need to bring their porta potties with them and things like How that. How many, do any of them not crap in their pants? <laughs> any of the women in your life? Do you have anyone that you're not giving to pants <laughs> no, to this year for not. Christmas? Murray's crouched, crouched over his wife's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Your uh, wife's mouth smells like it depends. That's awful. So I'd have to have nurses. I guess keep an eye on And then she yeah. says the food tastes like crap. It's your mouth, lady. Right. Hey, uh, Mike, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Mike. How you doing, guys? Paulo's wife has a hairy bottom. <laughs> <laughs> now, Paulo, did you tell her kitty litter, used kitty litter is not a snack food? Yeah, she's going to have to eat that. She's yet. hungry. But I'm hungry, Paulo. Hey, Joe, you're on with Paulo. <laughs> hey, guys. Yeah. Paulo's wife refuses to see Harry Potter because she's jealous of his salivary glands. <laughs> <laughs> that's his mom. Oh, that's the mother. <laughs> his mom can't that's make spit. Who has the problem with? So I don't know what you're uh, you're saying, Paulo. Can we I... get her to yell? No. Get her to yell. No, Please. I'm, believe me, I don't. If we even start anything, it gets. It's you don't understand. I have to live here. Okay? And it, you don't have you don't. to. You and, do not. And You're I know, bigger. I mean, Afghan women feel sorry for Paul Lowe. That's how disgusting his life is. I mean, is. you know, if you guys could get her on the phone. Have when a are nice you hoping to get the right to vote, Paul Lowe? Just see, I want to see if Bin Loudon is living in that cave. But honestly, hers. I don't think you can have a nice conversation with you, with her. I mean, I, I, just, I know you got a lot of issues with her, and you're... You're upset with her from a long time ago when she used to scream at uh, when we were trying to have 
conversation. Right. I just want to ask her, does she gargle with Listerine or Latrine? Which is it? And I'm saying, this is not, no. She, uh, things are bad enough right now. I do not need to add. She to uses it. a urinary cake as a breath mint. Oh. <laughs> Altoids, curiously, have no effect on her. So, I mean, you know, as I say, if I, if I would have put her on the phone and you started giving her, baiting her, she would go nuts on me. And I mean, I'd pay for it for, for the rest of my life. Probably. So what? I don't know. It's, it's difficult enough, so I'm right. not gonna. I'm well, not gonna get started on. Will it. you just answer me one question? Yes. When she gets up in the morning, and she gets her toothbrush, does she squeeze a dog's ass across that toothbrush as toothpaste? <laughs> no. We have two lovely little pomeranians that we would. Never oh, this is from Dominic on the instant feedback. Polo, do you get yelled at for leaving the seat up on your wife's mouth? <laughs> <laughs> it's a toilet you mouth. Now, this has turned so ugly. I, mean, I just, I'm here, I, we've got a big movie opening this week. Right. We've, got, we've got that Snoop Dogg movie, we've got a Steve Martin movie. We've got movies hey, Sean, all over. you're on with Polo. Hi, Sean. Polo's wife's got a case of exactly. Her breath smells exactly like her butt. <laughs> good, good, good. So I'll talk to her. I'll talk to her. Maybe. Talk to her now. Yeah. Ask her now. Well, then I'm going to have to get off the phone because if I get... No, I on try, the phone. Geez, okay, I'll try. All right, here's Mike. Mike, uh, you want to say something about Polo's wife? Yeah, how you doing, boys? Yeah. Polo's wife's a fat hog who has a lot of warts. <laughs> gil, gil, gil. I always like it when it gets tied into the Oscar blurb. And I, I like gil, 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 gil. And so, gil, gil, gil. want to go to New York in a few weeks? Oh, okay. Not if I have to go with you. Ask her again. Tell her you didn't hear her. So she says it louder. She's not in a good mood. Just ask her if she loves you. No, no. Just no. please. Her. Trust me. This please, just yell that. Nothing thing. else. Just say, do you love me, honey? <laughs> no, seriously. Please, I'll just, yell I'll it. say something else. I can't say that. Ask her as a girl, did she practice French kissing you know, on roadkill? She's so mad all the time. Okay? Polo. Shh. Hello? She's not talking to me. Ask her if she still loves you. What? Ask her if she still loves you. No, I'm not going to ask her Come that. Come on, please. Yeah, please. You'll know that that's just some kind of stupid thing you guys are egging me onto. It'll no. Be, just it'll say, really upset oh, me. love isn't stupid. Just I say, don't you think we could have a great time in New York City? Yeah, I, I, or, okay, I can say that. Yeah. All right. Hold on. Jesus, this is not nice. Hey, no, she's gone. Hey, girl! She's gone. She's already halfway in New York. She's gone. I can't get to her. Where'd she run to? The other, uh, the other wing. The other Damn wing. Man. Your house isn't that big. <laughs> what part of the box is she in? <laughs> the refrigerator box. The other wing of the, of the, the other way. Just keep yelling her name until she comes in furious. <laughs> Come on, Gail! 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 Gail-o! I don't think she's going to uh, respond. And my mother is going to wonder what the hell's going on. Gail! Gail! Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. And besides, you can probably hear the Jeopardy going on. Yeah! You can hear the gonna Jeopardy song. Don't worry about it. She's not coming. She's, not coming. she's, she's furious with me. Why is she mad at you? What happened to her that got her so mad again? Because I'm telling her, you know, she's got all these problems and she, she should be relaxing. And she gets mad at me because I tell her she shouldn't be driving around tiring herself out. And she, so she's mad at me for that. I don't don't even ask me. So. What's wrong with stink breath? She's, that's what I'm saying. The problem has it, it's Polo, all mental. Tell me the truth. When's the last time you two had sex? It's all mental. It's well, she's got she's got a liver problems. I'm not gonna. Well, we're not asking you to hump that, right? I understand, but there's blood issues, and I'm worried. Right, what's about the it. last time? What's the last time? Just tell us. It's been a while. Tell us who was president. It's, it was Bill Clinton. Are you sure? Yes. No way. Well, First or second Bush. term? It may have been George W., I mean. It may have been Winston Churchill. <laughs> no, there is not one of All right, Chris wants to talk to you, Paul, and give you some advice. Chris, you're on Ron Fez. Hi, Chris. Hey, Ron Fez. How's it going? Cool. Good, I got two. Uh, first one is, uh, Paul's wife made all the Oscars. <laughs> That's me. Uh, the other one is, uh, it's uh, the Harry Potter one, uh, Polo's wife smells like the potty. Uh, now, this is the biggest movie of all time. Now, all of a sudden, we... we right, now it's just about your wife screaming. <laughs> exactly. All right, next week, can we get her on the air? I will talk to her. How about your mom, the dry mouth? <laughs> she, 
I can't get her over. I can't get her over here. It'll take her like ten minutes just to get her over. What about Murray again? Murray's at the other house. <laughs> God, what a nightmare. We're going to have a is. big... Get besides, spitless on the phone for us. Right, You're not doing Thanksgiving. anything to earn this trip. All right, first of all, next week's Thanksgiving, and there's a big Thanksgiving dinner she's trying to organize, and that's part of the problem. She's hosing down the turkey now so she can eat it. Pre-chewed. Yeah, she's already bought, like, you know, 70, 80 pounds of food, and it's not even Thanksgiving yet. Well, what else? All right, that's what your wife is eating. What about everybody else? <laughs> I understand, but the point is... The point is, so next week, you know, she's got a big thing going with everybody's going to be at the same place at the same time. And I'm, I'm already her, bored, Polo. I understand. And you've ruined Harry Potter for me. I understand. Believe me, I didn't want to drag my wife into this, okay? It's a very stressful time. I wanted to hear your wife. Huh? I understand you're upset with me that I didn't get her on the phone, but you don't have to live with her. Would you be allowed to come to New York without her? I don't know for sure. Why did you stay in this marriage if all you do is fight? Because that's what you're supposed to do is stay married. But yeah. even if you're swinging it, she hits you, right? You're abused, Polo, and you don't even know it. Yeah, but that's not the problem. The problem is not physical abuse. Have you it's known a couples abuse. like that, Fez? You know, only my grandparents, but I mean, they never swung on each other. They just constantly bickered back and forth. They're but bickersons. You, but you expect old, old people to do that. Right. But I know a couple, young couple... They would be at parties, they would punch each other, everybody would make a big deal about breaking them up, then they would make out. And in the meantime, people's shirts are ripped, you know, people pulled him off her. Right, yeah. And told her to stop screaming, stop taunting them, and they do all this stuff, and the next thing you know, they're making out. You know what? I do know that one couple, we were watching a football game, the husband's team lost, he got so mad, he got into an argument with her, and stormed, it was at someone else's house, he stormed out of the house, slammed the door in her face, and drove away and left her there. Really? <laughs> at someone else's house, right in front of everybody. Oh, and she'll do things like that. She'll take off with the car. You live a nightmare. Uh, I know. All right, maybe that's how we ought to give out the MP3 player tonight, Fuzzy. Oh, if someone knows a worse couple than the O's? <laughs> yeah, one of those awful, awful couples. All right, that's what we want to hear about. And, those, I mean, I'll, I'll cringe all the way through it. <laughs> those fighting couples, and because, you know what? They have no shame. No. They don't care where they're at in public. They will just go at each other. Sure they will. It's true. That is true. It happens all the time, especially at the mall or in the bar. Now you're talking about, you're trying to win an MP3 player, yes, aren't you, Polo? <laughs> What's the worst thing your wife's ever done to you in public? Oh, it, God, I have, I have no idea. Take a knife to me? I don't know. Has she stabbed you? <laughs> no, but, you Did know. Did she take, take a dinner knife to you? Yeah, that's, you know. We in a restaurant? About, we joke about that all the time. Did she put it in you? <laughs> no. Because, Just, you know, I'm, I'm not exactly a lightweight myself. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, compared to her. <laughs> Compared to the Brachiosaurus, you're a T-Rex. All right, we're going to take a break here, Polo, but that's how we'll give out our MP3 All right, player tonight. Sir. All right. Worst All right. couple than Polo and Gail. Yeah, do you know one of those horrible fighting couples? Couples from hell. Yeah. Literally, <laughs> couples from hell. 877-692-1027. We have a Samsung Yep MP3 player to give away. I'll tell you this, Fez. I saw my grandmother... Opened my grandma, my grandfather's mouth one time when I was looking. Really? Punched him right in the mouth. Blood was coming down at the end of the party. That was like a big family reunion. Uh -huh. She lit him up. My grandfather had a laundry service, so he always went out on deliveries. All Chinese people do. We are not Chinese. And my uh, grandmother thought he was having a fling with one of the customers, one sure. of the other old ladies. Right. Her name was Barbara. Every time he went out for deliveries... You would hear this horrible screech. Are you going to Barbara's? It was oh constantly in that poor man's ear. And he's just trying to run his laundry service. Right, he's just trying to make a living. I remember when your grandfather said this. This duck's still alive! He did not say that! Chop, chop. 877-692-1027 with Ron and Fez Show. Ron and Fez. 1027 WNEW. We're Ron and Fez. Your chance to win a Samsung Yep MP3 player. Visit the new Samsung store at the CompUSA location in Manhattan at 425th Avenue. Now tonight, you can win an MP3 player from Ron and Fez by giving us those couple from hell stories. Also, we have a I Want My MP3 song parody contest. 
where you can send us your parody songs. Winner of that competition will receive an MP3 player. Also, uh, we got an MP3 player if you want to play the football pool this week on RonFez.net. So we're giving you stuff. Yeah, we got the stuff. We got the MP3s. Now, with the parody song contest, Ronnie, we actually have our first entry. Really? Yep, this is our first entry. See if you like it. Come on. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure, Fuzzy. All right, tonight, just uh, couples from hell. Really bad couples you know or have seen before. That just let each other have it, and they don't care where they're at. Hey, uh, Rob. Rob, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Rob. Hey, how you guys doing? <coughs> Hello? Yeah, yeah buddy. buddy. What can we do for you? All right, I got to tell you the nightmare story. My sister, she was getting married to this guy named Paul. A rehearsal dinner. I mean, these two fought all the time. The rehearsal dinner, the parents had given them an early wedding gift of a digital camera so they could take pictures of all, you know, everything that was going on. So they start fighting because he was going to go out that night to strip clubs with all the guys in the wedding party. And my sister used to be a dancer. I don't know why she was all mad about it. So they start fighting. She throws down, slams the camera, steps on it in front of the whole party, in front of the parents. And to top it off, he ran out of the building. He came back to the party while everyone was sitting there eating dinner with a stripper. And she started dancing right there in the restaurant. No! I swear. And you know what, Fez? You'll love this. It happened down in Florida. They're from Pier Verde Beach. Okay. In oh, St. Well, Petersburg. Pier Verde. They got sure. married. They got married at the Don Cesar. Nice. Oh, that's that's an expensive place. All right, where'd she dance at? Uh, she used to work at the dollhouse. Nice. Doll right. very, right. very classy broads at the dollhouse. The dollhouse. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you gotta be, uh, you, you gotta be half coked up to act like that, though, right? Uh, something was going on. I something mean, to act that crazy. <laughs> then he brings the stripper back. Now, how are your parents reacting to all this? Uh, well, my father's a little bit of a crazy person. He was half in a bottle. But his parents were a little bit more on the conservative type. They freaked out. They wanted to cancel the wedding since they were paying for part of it. But, you know, things mellowed out eventually by the end of the night. People left. He left. And the next morning, the wedding went down as planned. Oh, wow. beautiful. That and, went down as planned. They're still together? Uh, they're still together. This was only about eight months ago. Oh, okay. So I, the over-under isn't uh, decided yet. Sure. I'd love pictures. Oh, wait. She stomped on the camera. Right. right. She destroyed <laughs> it. Damn. Joe Poo, does he make the finals? I like it. He has yeah. a nice sister from a nice family. Nice, nice sister, sister. Nice family. She's, She's a hooker. hooker. All right. Hold on, Rob. Hold on, buddy. All right, Joe Poo, of course, is your judge, jury, and executioner tonight. Well, Joe uh, understands white trash like nobody else. That's for sure. So uh, it shouldn't be hard for him at all to come up with this. What would you like about that story, Joe? Well, he has a nicer family than I do, so That's I trade true. with him in a minute. <laughs> that uh, sounds storybook to you. <laughs> <coughs> My dream come true. Hey, uh, Jason. Jason, you're on uh, Run of Fez. Hi, Jason. Hey, guys. What can we do for you? This is the ultimate white trash story. My friend's family, my friend Alan, they live in, you know, they live in a slum, they live in like a tenement house, horribly dysfunctional, and the parents are always fighting, hitting each other in the head, pulling in the <laughs> father or pull the mother's hair. So I'm over to their house having dinner, and they're having an argument, and the mother has a knife in her hand, and she's using her hand to express her points, Yeah. and she accidentally slashes the father in the arm, oh. and she starts bleeding, and she yells, you're lucky I missed your throat, you dumb bastard. And you're sitting there? Yeah, and she storms out of the house. Now, how old are you at this time? Thirteen. Unbelievable. Did yeah. everyone just stay and finish dinner? Um, Actually, I kind of got scared, so I called my parents and they came and picked me up. <laughs> my friend... It's been a stabbing at dinner. Get over here quick. <laughs> Joe Poo, what do you think? He's in the finals. All right. Wow. Way to go, Jason. Again, sounds like dinner at the Poo house. Hey, uh, Patrick, uh, Patrick, we're looking for the uh, couple from hell. Hey, Patrick, what do you got for us, buddy? How you doing? Guy I work with, his wife in front of everybody will look him straight in the eye and say, I wish you were dead. Really? Uh, about a year back, we were all on a business conference to Hawaii. We're all sitting there looking at the beautiful Pacific as the sun's going down. She looks over at him and says, I don't see the difference between this and Point Pleasant, New Jersey. 
<laughs> Between Hawaii? Now you take this skank all the way to Hawaii, and here's the way she treats you. That's what Paul owes it. Nothing right. is good enough. Yeah, ever. What do you think there, Joe Pooh? No, not detailed enough. What's the problem? You get the Point Pleasant. Right. That's a nice local angle. You heard about the ungrateful woman. Yeah, she's a loudmouth bitch. That's all. She all right. Is. Sorry, Patrick. All right, guys. All right. Good try, Patrick. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Oh, hey, you'd uh, want to kill so you're oh, just, I, I'd still be holding her head in the sand. Oh, yeah. And I, I beat her to death. <laughs> hey, Jay, you're on Ron Fez. Hi, Jay. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. All right. Um, actually, I got a little white trash story of my own about my uh, ex. Okay. Now, she was uh, cr pretty crazy. Uh, I like to use that term liberally here, though. But we started off kind of fast in a relationship. We ended up getting engaged. And about a week before the wedding, she basically gave a friend of mine oral pleasure. And I caught her. Not only this, but it was in my car as well. Oh, so your ex... Now, the the guy's a buddy of yours. Were you guys at a party or something? Uh, no, this was just right outside the house. All right, so you didn't know that the friend was even over? Uh, basically, I knew my friend was hanging out a lot over there. Right. But I didn't realize how close he was getting with her. It, it seemed more of a friendship thing than anything. I didn't, uh, I didn't think that maybe they were doing a little something on the side, which I found out later so horribly. What do you think, Joe? Nah, he's too stupid. He can't keep tabs on his girl. I'm sorry, <laughs> Jay. Ouch. I like the story a lot. Uh, I'd put everyone in the finals if I could. Sure. We just can't get past Joe Boo. Hey, uh, Don. Don, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Don. Oh, I love it. It's so good. They are delicious. Oh, God. So bad. And Fez, they are good. They are the best I ever heard. They are good. <laughs> hey, uh, Oz, Oz, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Oz. Hey, how you doing? What can we do for you? All right. Uh, my ex thought I was cheating on her. She came to my job. She started yelling, ranting, and raving, <laughs> and she thought I was cheating on a girl who used to work next to me. All right, what kind of work were you doing? Accounting. Okay, so she comes bur bursting in the office, bursting. right? It was after 8 o'clock at night. Oh, Lord. And she came. She said, well, you know, who's the bitch? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and she beat up the girl who worked right next to me. No and she way. she took my desk and she threw everything all over the place. Why did you start pounding her face in? Uh, because I didn't want to get arrested. Now, were you... I would have started stapling her. Anything <laughs> you could grab as a weapon. Were you cheating on her? No, I was not. I was working late, actually, for real. So this girl is just caught completely off guard by a raving psycho. Right, and she's getting all beat up, and she didn't know what the hell. She, this lady had, like, two kids, and she was married. She You're had, lucky you, know, you were sued forever by this woman. I don't know. And I, what are you doing? Just standing there watching a, this no, I woman get beat up? I try to you, pull you throw her into the Steiner recliner and try to get some kind of sense out of her. Then my Joe, boss, what do you think? The transmission. My boss came out of his office and she started throwing stuff at him because she thought he, he thought she thought he was going to go after her. Please let anyone's chick show up here and start hitting people. Oz, did you have? Did you lose this job? Yeah, eventually I did. did sure. You have, did you have, ever have sex with that girl again? <laughs> he hey, didn't. Joe, I didn't have that to what be with. Sure, sure, he he did. Worth it if I did. Sure, Joe, did. what do you think? He's in the finals. Wow, all right, Oz. All right. I think he had both of them anyway. Why do you think people would lie when, you know, you're, they're trying to do a contest, Joe? Maybe he's trying to get that chick back. We I, just need you to judge, not interpret. Right. That, yeah, we're not asking you to interpret. <laughs> just give us a yay or a nay. Don't read anything into the story. All right, well, who are the finalists so far? We got Rob. Uh, with the sister squashing a camera. Uh-huh. Jason, with the girl stabbing another guy. And she said, lucky I didn't get your throat, you bastard. And three Oz. Ex-girlfriend thinks he's cheating, and the girl beat up the other girl. Okay. Are all you right, sure, Hunk? That's all good finals. It's like we've been back for four. No, we, we had... We had five people, but... No, two. we're talking to no. talk about so, something yeah. else. And anytime oh. that uh, I'm talking to you, Joe, I'll say Joe. Oh, sorry. But when when I'm you talking hear Hawk, Hawk yeah, I'll yeah. be back for four minutes. Yeah, it's not time yet, is it? Oh, we can keep going. I still got foosball elbow. Okay. I still feel the tingling from the foosball elbow. Give us another, you know, ten. How's that sound? Is that out of the question? Um... Hey, Mike. Mike, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Mike. How you doing, guys? 
Cool. I'm about 12 years old. A friend of mine invites me over to dinner. When I get there, everyone is silent. So I know something was going on. We all sit down for dinner, and they start. the mother and father start acting up again. They're fighting, they're screaming and yelling. The mother picked up the glass uh, that she was drinking and tossed it at the father, who ducked out of the way, and a 150-gallon saltwater tank came crashing down behind us. Oh, man! The dog is chasing the fish that are flapping around on the floor. The, mo- the father's going crazy because that was his tank, and the mother starts screaming and crying. Me and my friends still eating dinner. Because <laughs> you don't know what to do. Yeah, I don't know. It wasn't my house. Right. Joe, what do you think? This Bro- time I said your name. Broken fish tank is in the finals. All right. Okay, Mike, you made it. Hey, uh, Lewis. Lewis, you're on Rana Fez. Hey, Lewis. Hi. Hey, buddy. What can we do for you, Lewis? Uh, yes, uh, I have my cousin and his wife. They were always fighting at family reunions. And, uh, one time they went to a family reunion and she stabbed them because they were arguing about something. And then she took him and took him to the hospital. Now, I thought they were going to go home. Right. Now, they come back to the reunion. <laughs> and then they start arguing again. And then he shoots her in the foot. No, no way. way. Shut I'm up for serious. Piggy Toe. And they, and they went back to the hospital. And, and then they have the nerve to come back to the reunion again. And what then they're th- all nice after everybody. Joe, what do you think? Yeah, he's in too. I'm not sure I'm buying the story, but okay, Lois. The gunshot is where I started to. Yeah, we, we need you to pay attention to this if you really think it's true yeah. or not. No, I, I believe he's true. I think she did get shot in the foot. I mean, I was just getting ready to say, how many stabbings have we had? Right. And then a gunshot came in, too. And then they keep coming back. No cops ever get involved. Right, Come yeah. Come on, folks, we want real stories. Right, someone got stabbed and shot at a reunion, gone to the hospital to get checked out, and the hospital hasn't called the authorities by now? Hey, Rick, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, What's Rick. Up? What's up, guys? Yeah. I'll uh, make my story short, short and quick. I went to go help uh, one of my classmates write a paper on history of imperialism. So I go over to the girl's house and we're writing, and our parents were in the kitchen. They were arguing about something. So we heard a couple of glasses break. We walk in to, uh, you know, find out what the hell's going on. When we walk in, all I saw was her father spit snuff in her mother's face, you know, the chewing tobacco. Oh, man. Yeah, I know. That's just as bad as it gets. You know, I didn't know whether to laugh or what to do, so I just looked at her. Oh. And she just turned red, and that was it, man. We just went back to the room. And she had chewing tobacco on her face. <laughs> yeah. I just, what do you do? What do you do? Now, did do uh, did she wipe it off? Did she freak? Did she smash him? Everything just kind of like froze. He, just, uh-huh. he, he, he looked at her. You know, I mean, I looked at the both of them, and I looked at her. And she was just like turning red. You know, so I just grabbed her. We went, we went back to the room. And I didn't want to say anything about it. Right. But, you know, through the course of the night, you know, it was just constantly playing in the back of my mind. And I just sure. never said anything to her about it. Oh, yeah. She's turning in that term paper, and there's chewing tobacco juice all over <laughs> it. Like she's an umpire. Uh, Joe. Yeah, in the finals. Okay, buddy. There we go. All right, Rick. You made it past Joe Poo. He's the judge. We have a Samsung Yep MP3 player on the line talking about those couples from hell. These things are great, Fuzzy. Oh, yeah. Everyone has seen it. Uh, my, some of my favorites, you know, I'm not the judge, is when it happens when you're a kid and you see someone else's parents lose Going it. at it, yeah. Yeah. And normally they're drinking. Sure. That's the situation. Yeah. But, you know, it's still not an excuse for sh- spitting, chewing tobacco in someone's face. <laughs> or smashing a 150-gallon uh, fish tank. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. Hey, uh, Jason. Jason, you're on Run Fest. Hello, Jason. Hey, how you doing? What can we do for you? Uh, I have the craziest grandparents. They will argue for hours upon hours over any topic you can think of. Then by the time they're done arguing... They don't even remember what they were arguing about. And then when you try to separate them from fighting, they'll yell at you. What do you think, Joe Poo? No. Sorry, Jason. Got to be a little stronger than that one. Yeah. Just Two old argue. people yelling at each other. We, everyone sees that every day of their lives. Hey, uh, John. John, you're on Iran Fez. Hello, John. Hi, guys. Uh, I got one. Me and my friend were sitting in a bar. And he was feeding dollars to a go-go girl. And she must he must accidentally hit his cell phone. And he called home, and his wife heard him hitting on a go-go girl. She comes running into the bar, rips him off the bar stool, and beats the hell out of him. <laughs> wow, this sounds like Three's Company. <laughs> How did she know what bar he was at? Well, 
he, we told her what bar we were going to be at. I don't believe you. All right. Sorry uh, about that, John. Okay. Sounds like a good story to me, buddy. Uh, Ken, Ken, you're on Irana Fez. Hello, Ken. Hey, Ken. guys. Yeah, you're on the air, buddy. What do you got for us? Uh, this, is, this is about me and my ex. We were out one night. We were on a bar crawl, and we got separated along the way, and I thought she was in a club. So I went inside. We knew the bouncers, but I went inside to check to see if she was there. I come out. She's outside totally ripped. She's screaming, yelling at me. I get her in the club, and I'm like, at this time, you know, I'm... I got to bust the seam, so I go to the men's room. She comes in the men's room, proceeds to attack me while I'm at the urinal. Oh. I go running out the club like I'm just trying to get the heck out of the place. She's beating on my back. We <laughs> blow by the bouncers. We're in the street. I grab her, try to give her the bitch slap to calm her down. Sure. So there's a group of like five guys there with their girlfriends coming down the street. They think I'm beating her up. So the guys grab me, start kicking the crap out of me. Oh. I wish you do when uh, you're getting uh, your ass beat. Oh, she's just sitting there crying. Oh. And then after a couple minutes, she's like, oh, hey, wait, he wasn't, you know, wasn't hurt me. Uh. Yeah, it's a little late for that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little late. Uh -huh. <laughs> Tell your lawyer. What do you think, Joe? Good bar story. All right. Hold okay. on. Buddy. You made the finals. All right, Ken, you're in the finals. I always love that, like, on one of those cop shows where the guy's beating the woman, the authorities get there to break up the fight. The woman turns on the cops who are there to save her. That happens, they say, most of the time. That's yeah. why the cops have to be so careful when they're uh, breaking up any kind of fight. Because they will unite against an outside force. And the same... Every time. The same woman that you're saving will stab you. And it's happened time and time again. Yeah. Cops are always nervous about any kind of domestic problems. Here's uh, Kelly. Kelly, you're on Irana Fez. Hi, Kelly. Kelly? Hey guys. How are you guys doing? Yeah. Good. Go ahead, buddy. Oh, uh, yeah, during my wedding, um, my uh, wife had a girlfriend that was there and her husband, and it, it was known that her husband was cheating on her a lot, and apparently one of the girlfriends that he was cheating on was, was there. Well, she got a little bit of argument with him, and she had a prosthetic leg, her left leg. She <laughs> took it off and started beating him with it. I mean, he was, she was beating the crap out of him. And they hopped across the floor and started beating the girl he was cheating with. Were these the McCartneys? If it Sorry. was, is there, it's, you know, I miss the old wife. What do you think, Joe? No. Not falling for it? Not falling for okay, it. Okay, sorry, okay. buddy. It's all Joe Poole. Maybe if he had sex with the leg. Hey, Liz. Liz, you're on uh, Ron and Fez. Hi, Liz. Hi. Hey. Okay, here's my story. One night, um, this is about my husband and I. Uh, one night I was out with my sister and we were at a bar. My husband met us there. And my sister was getting flirted with by some guys. My husband thought that the guys were flirting with me, too. And he got a little bit too drunk, and he was starting to watch what we were doing, and he started to choke me at the bar. All right, here's the situation. Oh, my gosh. Even <laughs> if they were flirting, what does that got to mean? The marriage would break up? No. Right. Why yes. worry? Exactly. Well, that's just the way he is. He's always been this way. So my sister said, don't mess with my sister tonight, Dave. You know, you better leave her alone. And he said, I'm not doing anything. So hey, next Dave. minute later, he did something else, and I called. He spit on me. And I just reached around with all my might and punched him dead in his nose. Blood was all over the bar. And we got flagged. And uh, I they, had <laughs> they, were they had to leave bike week. They were told they had to leave bike week. Oh, no. The shame. The walk is shame. <laughs> what do you think, Joe? She's in. All right. Anybody you like a woman, I'll punch you guy in the face, huh? Yeah. Turns me on. Yeah, I've always liked crazy women myself. Sure. Going insane. <laughs> my mom's nutty like that, too. What she do? One time my father brings home a set of Hot Wheels for me. And um, I hear them arguing in the kitchen about, oh, who, who gave him the Hot Wheels? And it was a girl that he worked with. Oh, jeez. So he comes, into the, he comes into the living room saying, how do you like the Hot Wheels, son? All of a sudden I see him come flying out of, <laughs> out of the kitchen. A big chicken leg comes flying, hits him in the head, knocks him over. They're going in there. Chicken and spatulas are flying everywhere. That is so weird with the frozen poultry. I think I told you the story. I'm a little kid. I'm at my aunt and uncle's. And my uncle, big blowhard, he's a great big guy, he's just crazy, and my aunt just is nuts. These are my godparents. He mouths off about something, he sits down, she goes to the sink, she's like thawing a frozen turkey, bashes him with the head, oh. with it, right? he goes out, he's laying on the floor. <laughs> oh man! He ain't moving. <laughs> I'm sitting there, and I literally, I remember thinking to myself, are we as low rent of a family <laughs> Is there possibly can be? Well, it's officially the holiday. Someone got knocked unconscious from I remember a frozen thinking, bird. I remember thinking, we've got no rugs, no carpeting <laughs> here. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
There's my uncle. He's out on the floor. I feel like running. <laughs> my mother always used softer weapons than that. My brother Corky, he got a loaf of bread over the head one time. Well, that's not and that, that yeah. feels good. Actually. And that popped and the slices went everywhere. I got whipped in the back of the head one time with one of those Gaines burgers. You remember those dog food? Sure. Dog food patties? That look like little cheeseburgers for dogs. She whipped that thing like a ninja star, hit me in the back of the head with it. Here's what scares me, though, Fez. We're talking about bad couples, and you bring up your mom and your brother. Mm -hmm. And that makes me feel like maybe it's, <laughs> this whole thing is going too far south. <laughs> Let's regroup. Uh, your chance to win this uh, very cool MP3 player, Fuzzy. It's a Samsung Yep MP3 player, and you can check out the new Samsung store. That's at Comp USA on Fifth Avenue. These are the things that are really cool. We've been playing with them all day. Downloading stuff, listening to it. Very, very nice. Uh, it's 877-692-1027. We're talking about Couples from Hell on the Ron and Fez Show. Ron and Fez. 1027 WNEW. At the History Channel, it's our job to take what's happening and put it into perspective. This week, we'll take a look at the world that was and the world that is. We'll explore the inner workings of the Pentagon and the history of chemical and biological weapons. It begins tomorrow with the critically acclaimed documentary about the life of the World Trade Center, Ground Zero America, all this week at 9, 8 central on the History Channel. Ready, Frank? That's a Baldwin. Oh, I don't that's know which... our Baldwin. No, I don't think it's ours, is it? I think it's Billy. Think it's Billy? Maybe it's Daniel. I want to go back. No, I don't know. <laughs> I want to go back. That's a Baldwin. I'm pretty sure of it. <laughs> Ron and Fez to tell you about the Sam Adams Brew It Yourself TV commercial contest in conjunction with Project Greenlight. It's your chance to write and direct a Sam Adams Boston Lager commercial. I've got an idea for ours, Fizzy. What do you got? You know how we were sitting around and everybody was hammering Sam Adams after the uh, show last night? Oh, yeah, trying out all the new winter seasonals. What about this? We get a bunch of Sam Adams empties and the commercial opens with us throwing them at Al Dukes, our producer. I love it. I'm so in. I don't have to pitch yet, but I love it. It's 30 seconds mm -hmm. of just throwing empty Sam Adams lager bottles at Al Dukes. And I mean, you just look and say, this could be you. Yeah. And I don't know why we're going to say that. Now, if you have an idea for a TV commercial, don't take ours. You can win $5,000 and a year's supply of Sam Adams. What you want to do is submit your idea at projectgreenlight.com and while you're there review six other competing entries now the contest begins November 26, 2001 and your contest ideas have to be in by December 3, 2001 go to projectgreenlight.com you gotta be 21 to enter see the website for the complete set of rules it's the Sam Adams Brew It Yourself TV commercial contest be a better beer drinker drink a better beer Sam Adams it's America's world class beer you're scaring me. Stop it. 1027 WNEW. We're Ron and Fez. 877-692-1027. We'll be taking more of your couple from hell stories for the MP3 player, the Samsung Yep MP3 player. But uh, some folks stopped by, Fezzy, from the Chocolate Show. That's going on this weekend at the Metropolitan Pavilion, West 18th Street in New York. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All, if you love chocolate, I guess this is going to be the place to be. And we got Philip Ruskin here from the Chocolate Show. Hi, Fez. Hi, Ron. How are you, sir? Good. Hi, good. Philip. I'm thrilled to be here. Hi. Anybody want some chocolate? Me? I'm a chocoholic. Oh, are you really, Fez? Oh, yeah. Now, you know, I actually I heard with all the uh, stress going around, more and more people are eating chocolate or... Or the same people were eating more amounts of chocolate, right? Yeah, than ever before. Yeah, because chocolate's uh, comfort food. You know, chocolate, chocolate's uh, something that makes you feel good. Right now, people need anything that can make them feel good, and it's uh, it's not expensive, and it's good for a date. You know, chocolate <laughs> is uh, besides flowers. Chocolate's like the number one gift that men give to women around Valentine's but Day. Is it supposed to bring out sexual feelings? I think I, I saw uh, Emeril Lagasse talking about that. That a good chocolate dessert, because uh -huh. they always say for, for a woman you should always cook for her. But uh -huh. then always have, a, and you know, if you've never been with her before, then have a good chocolate dessert. And they said they go wild. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, right, yeah, chocolate is the quickest way to a woman's heart or to a man's heart. I mean, chocolate, you know, some people have said that chocolate has a chemical. That releases uh, in the brain. Uh -huh. That's equivalent to uh, when you fall in love. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Fall in love with chocolate. 
And it's good for you, too. You're looking good, Philip, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe you've had enough chocolate. Right, what happens at the chocolate show, though? So Is there's it, oh, chocolate from all over. Yeah, or? there's chocolate from all over. There's uh, European chocolate. There's a lot of great American chocolate too. You know, people when they think fine chocolate, they think oh, European chocolate, French, Belgian. But there's a lot of really good American chocolate to be at the show. So there's chocolate from all over, all different forms. I and mean, we've got you know chocolate uh, bonbons, chocolate cookies. There's there's also going to be chocolate art. There's these amazing chocolate sculpture pieces. This one guy did a castle. With mm -hmm. the ramparts and, and, and all the details, real fine details, and there's beautiful chocolate artworks, and there's chocolate fashions. Now today... Chocolate fashions? You mean like a chocolate dress? Yeah, exactly. You can't eat it, though. Oh. And today, this morning, we had a chocolate fashion show. When, when people come to the show now, they're on mannequins because they'd melt if they were on the models too long. But we had a really hot fashion show this morning. We had Miss New York State wearing this uh, thing called Choco Doodle Dandy uh, by Nicole Miller, you know, New York's uh, designer. Sure. And we had a thing called Coco Chanel. Right. And, you know, and there was one which was, uh, this woman had a, it was a chocolate thong with a chocolate um, uh, uh, anchor that covered, you know, just... Right. Just That's hot. The right chocolate th oh. anchors away. Yeah, uh, it was... It oh, was so you got some naughty chocolates there, too, right. huh? Yeah. Yeah, I got some interesting chocolates here. Here we've got one. This is from Patty's Outrageous. It's called PMS Sticks. These are kind of fun. All right, so women uh, take this when they're PMSing? And uh, you appa just apparently, it makes, you know, makes them feel, feel a little better. A little better, a little, nice. you know. Break open in case of PMS emergency. I'm going to have one of these for Colleen Poole. <laughs> I'd eat them, but I've, I'm afraid I'll grow breasts. Here's one. Here's a nice one. It's Again? called... Bigger? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's this one? This is called schmutz. Schmutz? And chocolate schmutz? Yeah, you know what they do? She, she dunks apples in chocolate and candy, and then the stuff that falls off, um, she then makes candies out of them. I think they've got rice checks or corn checks or something in there. It's, a, it's really wow. fun and wholesome. Wow, all right, we'll eat some schmutz. That's what I need, chocolate-covered cereals. That's yeah, right. guys, have some of this cookie. It's out of this world. I do have some of my cookie. This is like health food. Now, this, yeah, this is like a, a great... brownie cookie. It's an <laughs> I call it energy bars. <laughs> Uh, this this is uh, this is called Equinox. This is French. This is like one of the top top French chocolatiers called Valrona. A lot of times you go to restaurants, you see it says Valrona chocolate right. cake, right? Mm -hmm. So this is like I call this Goobers for grown-ups. You remember uh, uh, Goobers? Sure. When you go to the movies. I love Goobers. So imagine like the most expensive chocolate, well, expensive, really fine chocolate covered almonds and hazelnuts. Try one. All right, what about... Uh, You're you know, like Willy Wonka, Philip. <laughs> what is the difference between, like, some of these expensive European chocolates and, like, uh, a good old-fashioned Hershey bar? Well, the American chocolates, like Hershey's, Nestle's, are the ones uh, that are made here. Most of the ones have a lot of milk. They're more Because most Americans like milk chocolate. When you go to the cities, you know, more cosmopolitan areas like New York, L.A., Chicago, people are starting to move towards darker chocolates because you know people travel it's a lot like what happened with wines about 10 years ago people started differentiating between types of grapes and types of wines and going for you know more subtlety and that's happening with chocolate people are going for more uh, darker chocolates more different shades you uh -huh. can get you can get like milk like at the show you'll see that some people have milk They're the same chocolatier usually that's about 45 percent cocoa content in what we call milk chocolate and that's got cream in it then they go up and you've got 56 percent is darker then you've got 72 percent cocoa that's really pretty dark then it goes up to like 82 and then 92 percent cocoa which is like real dark oh chocolate. that's too much cocoa that's that's a lot no a little too much for you fuzz that's gonna be too much for me i want 100 percent <laughs> it's never been done <laughs> it's never been done you're insane i'm willing to try it all right what else do we have uh, we got some chocolate-covered uh, espresso beans from Copper. Is oh, I the, love those. This is New York. You know, this is the only chocolate manufactured here in New York City. Is that right? Yeah. Really? Coppers. You think so, there'd be more? Yeah, I mean, some people, like, are based in New York, you know, uh -huh. office in New York, but this is uh, the, cho the only chocolate that's actually made here in New York. Now, uh, this weekend, as someone's scooting around the Metropolitan Pavilion... Are there going to be the free samples like you're offering oh, here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's free samples. You know what happens is people, they taste them. Yeah. And some of these are, are so good. And then, then a lot of them have show prices that people end up buying a lot of chocolate. Right. So there's, And it's a great Christmas present. It's a right, great... yeah. And you get to taste. So you get to taste a little bit different varieties from different countries and see what you like. You get to taste a lot of new chocolates. There are a lot of chocolates there people probably haven't tasted before. Wow, try these, Fez. 
We also have a kids' corner, which is fun. Oh, I'll be there. Check no, you. you can't. Legally, you can't. I can be 200 yards away. Now, this is a, tr- uh, a truffle. I'll have to send Al over to get me stuff. Now, that's a truffle? Yeah, it tastes like chocolate butter. It's real buttery. Wow. Good, huh? Those espresso beans are great. So how many different setups is there down there? It has to be all chocolate, right? Yeah, they're all chocolate, chocolate related. There's also things to drink. There's a, a booth, a Sandem and Port, which is a pairing chocolate. You know, so people pairing chocolate with uh, Port. Or there's a, a chocolate liqueur, which is really, really good. Now, that's like milk chocolate for grown-ups. It's a Vermeer Dutch chocolate cream liqueur. So it's, du- it's Dutch chocolate made with real chocolate and with premium vodka. Wow, you haven't given us one thing so far that isn't excellent. Really, really good. Well, what do you prefer? You prefer light or dark? What, what do you, what's your preference? I think I prefer the light. And these truffles are really, really good. Aren't they? That's real good. That's real creamy. You know what kills me? That box there, right? Um, is empty. What happened? <laughs> I am so sorry. Uh, and it's very affordable. The box you're holding, how yeah. much would you think that would cost? You know, something like that. You go, you go to a, a chocolateer and you get a box of truffles. Yeah. Six. Dollars. Really? This is six bucks? Isn't that amazing? Okay. So, how about, so you, you could bring it to a date. She'll think you spent $24 right. on her, right? You buy her two, she'll think you spent $50 on her. You like darker chocolate? Or, I, mean, uh, I need some water or Coke or something yeah. in the palate here, Al. I got to, you know, trying to cleanse the palate right. between each of these chocolate things. <laughs> I got, uh, oh, here, this is good. This is, uh, you like lighter, right? Okay, Fez likes mm-hmm. lighter, so yeah. we'll give him this. This has uh, hazelnuts. This is ragusa. This is from Switzerland. Chocolate spaghetti sauce? <laughs> no, not ragusa. Oh. This is better than spaghetti sauce. And this has uh, hazelnuts and praline. So this is more for like Fez's taste. Like, you know, you like light? Oh, yeah. This is, this is light. Now, by the end of the day, you got to have people just jumping off the walls after all this chocolate tasting. Well, you know, that's a, that's a good point, Fez, because uh, people, they take their time. And you think about this kind of chocolate... Is you don't eat lots of it. You, you you know you have a few, a little bit here, a little bit there. So it's like wine but, tasting, the same kind yeah. of thing. And then people are taking this more and more serious now, right? That's right. All right, how much does it cost to, for a ticket to this? It's fifteen dollars at the door. Uh-huh. People, if they go to uh, chocolateshow dot com, uh-huh. you can get tickets uh, online. It's uh, thirteen fifty, and they don't have to. We don't have to wait online if you get them uh, on the internet. Oh, okay. Um, I, I hope you guys come down yeah. as our guests. I'd love to. Come try some. There's others, obviously, besides these. And you'll see the chocolate fashions. Um, and there's uh, the also, you know, something that's a big draw is we've got a lot of top chefs from all the top restaurants. who have come from all over the country. So we've got nonstop demos in three different areas throughout this uh, space. It's called the Metropolitan Pavilion. It's on 18th Street. Yeah. So you've got, besides all the chocolatiers and the sculptures and the fashions, there are demos. So, you know, people like to cook. Mm-hmm. Or, or just like to watch, you know, you like to watch the Food Channel. It's like the Food Channel, but right. nonstop. All right, Philip, you're wise. Let me ask you this. I'm in the supermarket today. I buy a big half gallon of Nestle's chocolate milk, right? Mm-hmm. Now, you buy a regular half gallon of milk, and you look at the expiration date, and it's usually a week in advance. Mm-hmm. You get a good seven days. I'm looking at the expiration date on the chocolate milk. It's good through the end of the year. I got a month and a half on this thing. Why is that? Well, I don't. I don't make chocolate milk. Yeah, no. My guess. My guess. I'm not an expert. I'm not a doctor. I'm not. Why did I get a whole extra month out of the chocolate milk that I don't out of a regular half? Philip gallon? is a little high end for you when you're big chocolate <laughs> half a gallon of milk. I'm chocolate. just what? wondering. It's odd. Well, I would guess they probably put something... I mean, it's probably more than just milk. There's obviously the chocolate, and then there's probably something to keep the chocolate to preserved. Okay. All right. I don't know for a fact. There is there is some really good um, hot cocoa at the show. Really? You know, I mean, this stuff that you've been tasting. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, so it's the equivalent, right? But but uh, hot cocoa. Uh, this company, Valrona, makes one that's a killer. I mean, it's again, it's the stuff that's for grown ups. Some the, that hot cocoa, and it's some of it's so rich. That instead of like downing a whole glass, it's like 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 Ron was saying, like wine. You, you know, you, you take you sip. Uh-huh. So you really you don't. So don't go down there, Fezzy, and just start grabbing stuff with both hands. Walk around like you got a little class. I am gonna be jumping. I'm gonna be wigging at this thing. And bring We're friends. Have fun. Bring a date. I am all about the chocolate. Yeah. It's a perfect date. Yeah, sure. 
we got a lot of people come to bring their dates, and then sometimes if one person's interested in the um, the demos, you know, uh-huh. sit and watch the demos, and the other person might go check out the chocolate, and then they hook up at the cafe, and then they taste stuff together. Now, is this the first year you guys have been doing this? You've been doing no, it for a while. This is the fourth year. Fourth year. Yeah, and it keeps growing. I mean, you know, the thing about chocolate is people love chocolate. Yeah. What's not to love? And, and especially these days, you know, when people are all stressed out. Um, oh, yeah. You know, they need something to... To make them feel good. And you know the thing that's interesting we've noticed about chocolate, we've been doing this for four years. When you just say the word chocolate, people have a response. Right. It's sure. almost it's almost like it. I get excited. There you go. Yeah, everybody likes chocolate. All right, it's the Metropolitan Pavilion, that's uh, one twenty five West eighteenth Street. And that's gonna be this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And what's the website, Philip? It's uh chocolate show dot com, w chocolate show dot com. Chocolate show dot com and then we'll also give out these passes a little later on. Yeah, we got we brought you some some tickets to give away. Great. Nice, thanks thank so you. much. We appreciate it. And we'll look forward to seeing you there. Us yeah. too. Us as well. We'll we'll come look you up. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. We gotta uh, go to break. Phil, mm-hmm. thank you so much for coming in. And best of luck with Chocolate Show. Thanks, Thanks guys. Phil. It's been Phil a pleasure. Philip Ruskin from the Chocolate Show this weekend in Manhattan. Thanks. Well, we are Ron and Fez. Ron and Fez. One two seven W A W. We're Ron and Fez. And what we got is Samsung Yep MP3 players. Tonight you can get one by telling us your couple from Hell Story. 877-692-1027. You know, you hear some of this stuff, Fezzy, and you shouldn't laugh, but you have to. Oh, yeah. Or as, you cry. As long as you're not in it, you laugh. And everybody, at one time or another, was in that crazy love where I don't know whether it feels like love or it feels like hate, but you're crazy at the time. And you're just going nuts. I, she makes you crazier, you make her crazier, but you don't break up. I actually had a bride come after me the day of the wedding. She accused me of giving the groom a bachelor party, her new husband a bachelor party, right before their wedding. Because he wasn't allowed to have one. Great, so he's marrying the right person already. Oh, sure. And she came after me screaming, I know you gave him a... She's in her wedding gown. I know you gave him an effing bachelor party today. Before our wedding. Like, you're insane. Get away, bitch. <laughs> I'm not your husband. I'll knock your ass out. You want to keep that dress white? Good. Back That's... off now. Fez will fight any woman. He doesn't I care. I will. I'll go off. All right, let's uh, talk to some of these folks. Hey, uh, Jen. Jen, you're on Rana Fez. Hey, hey Jen. Hey. I got it. I... I have the top up. I dated this guy when I was like 22 years old. I'd been dating him like two, three months. Really, really, really liked him. So it was like on a Saturday night, I had a bachelorette party to go to. And, you know, I told him, why don't you go out with your friends? And he's like, I don't really have any plans, but we'll see what happens. So we show up at this club, and there he is in this little booth with, you know, this girl. So my friends, of course, are instigating me on to go over and say something. So Something to his whore. Right. So they're buying me shots at the bar first. Oh, that helps. So, yeah, I'll really build up the courage. Courage. And I I mean, I dug this guy. Like, I was thinking future with him, too. So I walk up to him, and he is, he's not shocked to see me, but he's, you know, he's, hey, what's up? And I just didn't even give him a chance to say anything. I walked over, and I started going off on her, saying, well, if you're going to cheat on me, you should at least find somebody better than some cheesy girl with big hair drinking white Zinfandel, you know, just going off on him. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, you know, can I introduce you to my sister now? Oh. Yeah. It's pretty bad. Needless to say, that was the end of that. You stupid yeah. bitch. Right. Tell me, I will take that with pleasure. Call me a stupid bitch again because... Uh, you went and ruined it. I totally did. I totally did. He was dating his sister? <laughs> right. No, he was just having right. a... Right. She, she, he had nothing else to do, so he was going out with his sister and... Oh, and that might have been your Mr. Right. That right. was your perfect guy. And now all he sees is the psycho. Right. Stupid girl. Here's your theme song. <laughs> Joe Poo, what do you say? Maybe if she would have sharpened, sharpened his pencil a little bit more, he wouldn't have cheated on her. He didn't cheat on her. He was having dinner with his sister. Yeah, he but... never cheated. She's the nut right. I think That's he did cheat. Too. That's the whole thing. What did you get told about interpreting? Right. Don't interpret. <laughs> just take the story. Well, she's it? out anyway. It was a I'm story. sorry, Jen, but you know what? 
To me, it was the best story of the night. Thank you. Wow. Because it was the most realistic. I don't believe it. All right. And embarrassing. What's not to believe? It's an embarrassing mm-hmm. story. Not some far-off fantasy that you're living. Well, when me and my sister go out to eat, it usually winds up to... Sex. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Jen. I would have picked you. Mm-hmm. Here is uh, Joe. Joe, you're on Run of Fez. Hi, Joe. How are you, buddy? Hey, guys. How's it going? What do you got, Joe? All right. I'm in college. A couple of friends of mine come down to visit me. Before we're going out, the girl wants to go get something to eat. So we go down to White Castle. Walk into White Castle. Nice. You're, you're yeah, really class. Top notch. Yeah. Top notch. yeah, that's me. <laughs> so and she was in the mood for White Castle. They didn't have it out by the school she went to. All right, we're in Hempstead, Long Island. We go to White Castle and uh, we're waiting online. And there's a guy in his mid forties, and there's a girl in like her young, in her early twenties, and they're having White Castles. We thought nothing of it. This woman comes schlepping in in slippers, a robe, a flashlight, her hair up in a bonnet, and uh, she kind of like saunters over to the table. And, you know, they're talking amongst themselves kind of quiet. And, you know, then the tones are getting louder and louder. All of a sudden, the woman starts yelling, You, S-O-B, how dare you, bub? So I was hitting the guy over the head with the flashlight. <laughs> honey, honey, take it easy, oh. take it easy, take it easy. They calm down. They, you know, they, now, I mean, the 15, 10 people in the place are all focused on the events going on at this table. So they're talking low amongst themselves. About three minutes later, You hussy, how dare you? He's my husband. So I was hitting her with the flashlight. She uh, takes a couple shots, and, you know, honey, honey, take it easy, take it easy. They calm down again. Three minutes later, the voices are up. She starts hitting this girl again. She knocks the flashlight out of this woman's hands. Flashlight comes flying across the room, lands at my feet. Swipes at the old lady. The old lady swipes at her. They're bleeding from the face. The old lady comes running to me, grabs the flashlight out of my hand, or at least tries to. I'm holding it up over her head so she can't reach it. She's getting pissed off at me because I'm not giving her a weapon. She grabs this woman, rolls out to the front lawn. They're brawling across the front lawn. The Hempstead police show up, and uh, they uh, they all got whisked away, bleeding and in handcuffs to women. <laughs> At what point did one woman yell, Devon, get the tables? <laughs> <laughs> this is a hardcore match. It was uh, something out of the ordinary. Uh, well, what do you think, Joe? We'll send it to the judge. Flashlight head bashing is in. All right. Now, in uh, Joe's defense, mm-hmm. everybody kept writing in to us, Fezzi, that said that, that uh, I walked up and yelled, but it was the sister bit. It was on Dawson's Creek two weeks ago. Really? Yeah. Told you. You didn't tell us that. But you I don't watch it. Dawson's Creek. Not anymore. <laughs> I'm starving for more That's chocolate. That's she broke up with Pasty. <laughs> hey, uh, Mike. Mike, you're on uh, Pasty. That's got to be the worst name in the history of TV. Pasty, and I've never even seen the show. Hi, Pasty. Hey, Mike, you're on a Fez. Hi, Mike. That should be the name of Michael Jackson's new album. Pasty. Face the music. Hi, Mike, go ahead. Hey, guys, what's going on? Not too much. I'm a paramedic. I'm working Sunday morning in Brooklyn, my regular shift, on the ambulance. And the night before, I'd gone out with a couple of friends to a movie in the city. I come to my girlfriend's house, who's now my ex. And uh, I called her. I said, hey, what's up? She starts raving that I was cheating on her the night before. Comes running out of her house. And I parked in front of her house in the ambulance uh, in a busy street. I was running out, banging on the door. Open this door, you slut. Open it up, you cheater. Da, da, in the middle of the street. This girl's wearing sweats and a bra. My partner, <laughs> thinks, my partner thinks she's a little normal, even though she's whacked. He reaches across and pulls my door handle, opening my door. She grabs me by the neck and drags me across the street out of my ambulance. And starts pounding me into a car. <laughs> so I'm pushing her away, pushing her away. You're getting kidnapped at this point. I'm getting destroyed in uniform, I mean, you know, in the middle of the street. Out come some of my friends, start screaming at her, and then she realized that, you know, it's Sunday morning, she can't stand in the middle of the street in a bra. She runs back inside. And, you know, locks the door. Then we got a call and we drove off, which was pretty wild. Uh, I think for the next two months, I was living that down from everybody I saw on the street. But at the and same time, now, did what did you and the chick do afterwards? Have hot sex? <laughs> that girl was long history after that one. <laughs> All right, what do you think, Joe? No, no girl could beat up a man. All right, sorry, Ever? Mike. Ever. I thought it was a great story. All right. Here's uh, Jeff. You're going to need your own ambulance. Jeff, you're on Rana Fez. Hi, Jeff. Hey, how you doing? Okay, I got a story. It was last year Thanksgiving time. I was with this girl for about two months, okay? 
And uh, during Thanksgiving, we ate Thanksgiving and everything. After Thanksgiving dinner, we all go downstairs, and her father had built a bar. So we're hanging out at the bar. We're drinking a little That's bit. That's nice, Fezzy, when your dad builds a bar downstairs. That is nice. Yeah. Well, nice. You live in Lodge. He's also a Vietnam vet, so he's got a Vietnam shrine all over the place. Nice. He's big into Nam and everything. Lest and we forget, Sergeant Drake Savage. <laughs> and his brother-in-law, who is also a Vietnam vet, is there, so they get to talking the stories and everything. The wife comes down the stairs, desserts upstairs on the table, and they ended up getting into an argument because he said a stupid remark about her ass as she was, you know, going back up the stairs. They argue, argue, argue. He has the rifle right there as we were talking. It, it, the whole shrine, everything's right there. Now, honest to God, joking around, he grabbed the rifle and said, I should have shot you, not married you. Uh-oh. As everyone's laughing, he shot her. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, so now they have witnesses who say, you know. He, now, now, the whole family is there. The whole right. family. Okay, he shot her right through the shoulder. Okay, <laughs> now her sister, her sister runs over immediately to her. Her daughter runs, who's my girlfriend, runs over immediately. Her brother, the whole family's there. You know, the paramedics are called, the cops are called, the father is arrested, the 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 mother is sure he's William Burroughs. He must go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> it was an, but the truth is, it was an accident. It was honestly an accident, but. You know, I went up the stairs, I grabbed my keys, and I'm saying, you know, listen, you have a twisted family. I'm leaving. You sure. Know? Yeah, and you so were serious? I, I got to get the hell out of here, right? Yeah, I, I was like, I, I'm, I, I just can't have mom dad looking she, at me. <laughs> she got freaked out that I, was le that I wasn't staying with her, that I wouldn't stay with her. So I just jumped in my car. I went, turned my car on and leaving. As I'm leaving, she is kicking my car all the way down her driveway. How hot. Until I got out of there. How could you have left and not got skull first? How could the whole family have post-war syndrome? How could you not have sex with your mother-in-law's shoulder wound? <laughs> uh, there was, I mean, there's nothing happening when you see some woman get shot in the shoulder. That's when I started thinking, yeah, now we're at a party. I'm shot no, up pretty no. bad, Jeffy. <laughs> Go on with help me. Get out while you still can. Just leave me. He goes down there, Fezzy, and they uh, and they got guns up to each other's heads like it's a De Niro movie. Now, now this you, is the first family function I go to. Did you have bow, to? Bow, bow, your turn, your turn, bow. Did you bow. have to get to the basement bar through a series of tunnels? No, no, it was just it, you walked right right through the kitchen, and it was it was a ranch house, and he had the basement. Yeah, you get done. there. And there's Martin Sheen in his underwear, bleeding, laying on a broken mirror. <laughs> he had a beautiful basement. He had a pool table and everything. He had the bar with a full were, Vietnam shrine. Seriously, you're downstairs with De Niro and the deer hunter. <laughs> and Christopher Walken, let me have the gun. <laughs> Do it! He's saying to his wife, Do it, show him! You ain't a pussy! Show these best! Bow! Oh, Bow! Your time, your time, Buku! Bow! What a nut! Jeff, you the smartest thing you did was run. Run for your life. <laughs> Jeff, what a family. I would have stayed. I would never have been able to leave. Jeff. What's what's in the next chapter is all I would have been thinking. I see her at the bars every once in a while, and every time I see her in the bars, I just make a run for it. Never I, get I, out of the boat, like we <laughs> learn in Apocalypse Now. I'd say, how's your mom's shoulder? How's your mom's shoulder? <laughs> I'd ha I've been fingering that little wound. <laughs> what do you think, oh, Joey? He, yeah, he's definitely in the finals. Yeah, of course he is. He, yeah. Believe me, if we were doing a national, uh, international show for weird families, they would do great. This was a, a definite top the charts on strange families. All right, hold on, Jeff. See Tom Berenger on his knees crawling out of the backyard. <laughs> his face is all cut <laughs> Nice, the Vietnam family. Oh, I love the Vietnam thing. 877-692-1027. This is all for a Samsung Yep MP3 player. Now, uh, now I, I brought up William Burroughs. You remember him, the writer of Naked Lunch? Okay. He actually was one of the beat writers. He actually, they got everybody was partying at the house, and they got into some thing where he said that he could shoot an apple off his wife's head, right? I mean, everybody was wasted. 
So, you know, they're taking bets or whatever. The guy's a good shot. He he just leans over and shoots her right in the effing forehead. Golly. Could you ever imagine a party emptying faster <laughs> down than that one? Well, uh, let's get our coat. I uh, got to go. Got an early uh, day tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Got to get up bright and early. Uh, love to stay and help you clean up. But, yeah, we got a sitter waiting. All right. Here's uh, here's Missy. Missy, you're on Run Hello, Missy. It's a little hard to follow a shooting there, but yeah, no my kidding. father's wife's a real psycho. Yeah. <laughs> she, uh, her first major family function, she got herself extremely drunk. It was a formal wedding. She was wearing pants and like a just a plain blouse. Well, she proceeded to pee all over herself. All right. Wait and a minute. <laughs> on purpose? Uh, well, I would hope not on purpose. Who, but whose wedding was it? It was my uncle, my now, father's brother. Was she already married to your dad at the time? Uh, yes, she was. This was her first formal function as a member of the family. All right, so her first family malfunction. Right. She, exactly. she gets drunk and pees herself. And she then proceeds to start dancing, so the pee is like a little trail oh, across God. the dance floor. Oh, what a pig. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, I mean... Did she not was, know she wet herself? I don't think so, because she was there a good hour after it happened. Oh, and nobody said, hey, you need to go clean yourself up? They tried to, but she was so damn drunk, she didn't care. It was disgusting. <laughs> but this I, same woman... I'm losing, oh, you're honey. starting to break up on your phone. Uh, that's enough anyway. Joe, what do you think? She's out. Uh, no? Yeah. Go for it? No. Sorry, Just that. leaving a trail down the aisle. Hey, Dave. Dave, you're on uh, Ron and Fez. I love these stories. Hi, Dave. Hey, Ron, Fez, Joe Poo, what's up, man? Hello. How you guys doing? Good. What's your All story, right, so Dave? Here's, so here's the deal. I uh, decided to go down to the local pub one day. It's late at night. had nothing going on. About 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm getting ready to leave, and this old guy starts to back his car up and goes across the ditch, hangs his car up. So, you know, I told him, hey, you know, let me call somebody or somebody I can call, whatever. So he gives me the number for his house. I call up, and I get his wife. So his wife comes. I'm hanging out with the guy. His wife shows up. The guy's like five foot six, maybe 130 pounds. Wife gets out of the car like six foot 300 pounds. Oh my gosh! In, this in is Paul house, In her house coat, all done up. You know, the hair all over the place. She goes walking up to him. She says, "Oh, you're drinking again, huh?" Pulls off and knocks him on his ass. Clears, oh, clears him out. I mean, lays him out completely. It's Andy Capp's wife. She, she turns around. She looks at me, and I'm going, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I wasn't with him. I was just trying to help him in that. Man, she turns as sweet as can be. She says, sir, I really want to thank you for trying to help my husband, blah, blah, blah. And uh, thank you very much. Next thing I know, she picks him up by one hand, kicks him in the ass, tells him to get in the car, and don't say another word. And off they went. It was unbelievable. All right, we'll turn this one over to the judge, Joe Poo. He's in. All right, there you go. Thanks, Duel. Now you see, you notice that Joe kind of leans towards the guys more than the girls. Oh, okay. It's all for the guys. I was noticing that. Hey, uh, Doreen, Doreen, you're on run a fez. Hi, Doreen. Hello. How are you? What can we do for you tonight, dear? Uh, it's it's hard to uh, actually compete with all those stories. There's actually, a lot I don't of. I have to win. I just wanted to share my story with you. <laughs> okay. I am a psycho bitch from hell, and I am aware for many years now that I need Prozac, but I have been in denial. But um, I'm recently married, two years, and uh, we have fought in various places. It doesn't matter. It's so it's so sad. My husband's the sweetest guy. And it doesn't matter where we are. If he says something anywhere, I will just go off on him. I mean, I will curse him out. It doesn't matter where we are. And it's 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 really bad. But one particular story, we were in the kitchen. Now, you seem like a nice person now. Well, I you, am You a just nice have person. these crazy mood swings? Um, yes, I do. So it's not his fault at all, right? N not really. It's just, it's just him actually breathing that bothers me sometimes. Breathing? I know. It's sad. I do love a guy. But Who wants your love? That's the problem. If you love him, let him go. Your love hurts. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm a lot better. But I was in the kitchen, and we were fighting, and um, I was doing the dishes, and he was standing behind me on the other side of the table. And I don't know what, I can't remember what we were talking about or fighting about. 
all of a sudden he said something and my eyes turned red and the entire dish rack was full of dishes, silverware, plates, cups, everything. And I just took the entire dish rack and I just heaved it as, as hard as I could at him. I mean, everything just broke all over the place, silverware, glasses, plates, and one steak knife stuck right in the wall, like maybe a foot from his head. And he just called me a psycho bitch, ran out of the house, and maybe a half hour later came back and was like the best sex we ever had, but... Including the knives. Doreen, you know what? I want to spend a weekend with you, just so when you do this once, <laughs> I punch you in that <laughs> ear hole, and you never do it again, and I will pop that eardrum, if that's what you need, because I think that's what you're looking for. Actually, I'm I'm better now. I feel uh, I feel. Uh, Fezzi, I would I I tied two steel tip boots together, and I'd come running them with them tied together, and just start swinging them at her like I, a bolo. I, need, I do need a good kick in the ass. You do, and then you'll be fine. Yes. Uh, I'll headbutt you right in that big nose of yours. So, Doreen, instead of Prozac, I'm writing you a prescription for one ruptured eardrum. Ow. I'll punch you with the ear hole, and then you'll spend the rest of your time thinking, I better be good. I'm nicer to him now. I am. You need to be locked in a wash machine and somebody dangles food in front of your face for a month. <laughs> What's that mean? Well, you know, How do the two go machine. together? Yeah, why put her in the washing machine? <laughs> because she could see out, and then I'm dangling chocolate cake in front of her. Chocolate cake. All right, what do you think, Joe? Nah, she's out. I hate her. All right, sorry about that, Joe. Wow. That's okay. No, go home and beat up your husband. Okay. All right, bye-bye. Right. So she threw she a rag. She seems like a nice person now, but at least she's honest where she's going, I got a mental disability. She knows she's psycho. I blame him, though, because I'll wake the kids up for that beating. As long as she's walking around with two intact eardrums, it's his fault. I would, I would call her mother... Put the phone on speakerphone while I punch that <laughs> eardrum so her mother would see what the hell goes on over here. Hello, Mrs. <laughs> bitch. I'd like you to listen to this. And then just beat her with the receiver. Take the receiver and beat her daughter's skull with it. <laughs> so the whole family can wake up. <laughs> All right, we got to take a break, Fez. When we come back, I will do a couple more calls and then we'll uh, pick a winner, okay? Okay, a few more chances to get in on this for the Samsung Yep MP3 player. 877-692-1027, Sir Ron Fez Show. Ron and Fez, 1027 WNEW. We're Ron and Fez. We'll take a few more calls on Couples from Hell for a Samsung Yep MP3 player. Want to remind you other ways to win the MP3 player. There's RonFez.net, the football pool. Go to RonFez.net, play the pool you win this week. You're walking home with a Samsung Yep MP3 player. Uh, should be exciting. Best bets uh, tomorrow night, too. We'll have to get a hold of Heckler. Right. And, of course, we have the uh, I Want My MP3 Song Parody Contest. That's a little uh, bit of a song uh, parody itself. There you go. So, so, if you do parodies or you know somebody, get them into us right away. Right. You can uh, email the MP3 versions to Ron and Fez at WNEW.com or you can mail them to us if you need to. Ron and Fez Show, WNEW, 888 7th Avenue, 10th Floor, New York, New York, 10106. So if you do uh, song parodies or know somebody, and we're always looking for people, I guess we'll have Billy judge that one, Fuzzy. Billy uh, from Air Sick. One half of Air Sick, yeah. the sick part. And, of course, the deadline is Wednesday, November 28th to get those in. Hey, uh, John. John, you're on Run Fez. Hey, Hi, John. Fez, how you doing? Hey, buddy. Uh, yeah, so I'm at my buddy's house. We're partying upstairs in his room. We that were That doesn't make you a bad person. <laughs> no, no, I didn't think so. We were kids at the time. They didn't know we were up there partying. So we hear, some, we hear them freaking out downstairs. They got a, uh, a cat that just had kittens and a retarded dog. The dog was just messed up. <laughs> so it had a false pregnancy because the cat had the kittens. One of the kittens went by its little squeaky toy, so the dog shredded the kitten on the spot. Oh. It, I swear to God, man, it killed the kitten. There's blood all over the place, right? So his parents start fighting immediately over this. One's defending the dog. The other one's defending the cat. So, you know, the old lady's punching him. And he's pulling her hair. We're just standing at the top of the stairs looking at it all. More bloodshed. Bloodshed, punches, and hair pulling. It was all great. Right, let's check with Joe Poo. Joe. It's in. Nice. All right. Nice. All right, hold on, buddy. All it took was a dead kitten. 
No, it was the retarded dog. Oh, okay. Well, we'll just take a couple more calls. Uh, Dave, Dave, you're on Ron and Fez. Hello, Dave. How you doing, Ron and Fez? What can we do for you, Dave? Yeah, my story. Um, I was uh, at my friend's house and um, one weekend. I've been there a few times. I've seen them argue and everything, but nothing like this. I'm sitting around the table. And, you know, they get into their normal argument, and she sounds really funny because she can't pronounce certain letters, so it sounds really squeaky, and she sounds like a little kid screaming. And uh, she's sitting at the end of the table. She starts rattling off about something, and he starts screaming at her, like telling her to shut up, and she just keeps on going on. And then suddenly, after like five minutes, he gets up and starts going after her. She gets up, and they're ch he's chasing her around the table. In front of me, they're just chasing her around the table. And I got up as fast as possible, my friend, and left the room, and all I heard was just them running and, like, screaming and swearing up. It was, it was crazy. Joe? Well, it was amusing to him, but not me. Sorry about that, sir. All right, not in the finals. All right, how many more should we take here, Joe? How many do you feel comfortable with? Two, three? How many more calls? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm just looking for some help. One. One's One. good. It's a magic number. Uh-uh, three is. Who's counting? Hey, uh, Kristen. Kirsten. Hi, Kirsten. Hey, Ron. Or Fez. How you doing? Well, well we're, we're both, both here. Both you, we never uh, do a situation where it's just one or the other. Okay. Tonight will be the Ron show. Tomorrow night will be the Fez show. <laughs> How about the Kirsten show? I can't uh, see yeah. that happening. Not even <laughs> on Earth, too. Uh-uh. You got a story, Kirsten? Yeah, I got a story. Um, my worst fighting couple story, actually, is myself and my ex-boyfriend. Um, we always were fighting, but, um, one night in particular, um, he didn't come home and, um, you know, I thought he was cheating on me and sure. always had those feelings. So he didn't come home and I was pissed off. So I went to the store to get a pack of cigarettes and I noticed his car was at the local bar. So I went in and I saw him sitting there with another girl and, um, so I went over and I got really pissed and I smashed their heads together. And then I ran out, out of the bar, and he came out chasing me. And I got my car, and I started chasing him around the parking lot with the car. It was more amusing, I guess, than a crazy fight, but... <laughs> to who? For me, I was amused. Joe, I'll call back when we have the confusing story contest. <laughs> All right, that's your one call, or you want it, Joe? <laughs> Thanks, Oh, she's mad. <laughs> Joe Poo, I would watch for a Corvette when you leave the building tonight. Joe, we got to pick a uh, winner here. I got one. You don't need a second to think or anything, Joe? You just, uh, you're ready to leap right into it? Choices are all in my head. <laughs> I Everything's hate. in your head. Okay. What do you got? Joe Poo. No timpani? Oh my God, he's a pain in the ass. He really is. And the winner is Jeff. With the shell-shocked vet story, shooting the wife. <laughs> what could beat that? Nothing. What could be a man shooting his wife? I shouldn't have married you. I should have shot you. Pow. She gets shot in the shoulder. All right. Jeff, you're winning a Samsung Yep MP3 player. CompUSA wants to show you the latest in digital technology. Visit the new Samsung store at the CompUSA location on 5th Avenue. Experience the latest digital convergence products. Brought to you by Samsung, CompUSA, and of course your friends at WNEW. It's a bone, you lucky dog! <laughs> lucky! That's nice. You know what I would do with my fez? Wrap it right up for somebody for Christmas. I know. Tis the season. And we're doing a lot of giving. Remember, you can go to ronfez.net, play the football pool, chance to win a Samsung Yep MP3 player there. Also, of course, the parody song contest that we told you about. All right, Fez, this on the instant feedback. Uh, somebody's doing homework and said, do you happen to know the name of the company who was responsible for the mercury poisoning in Taiwan with the famous picture of the mom in the bathtub with the daughter? Wow. No. I know that it got into... Like tuna fish, right. but it wasn't oh. like the tuna fish company's fault. Yeah. It was whoever put the mercury in the water that the tuna mm. got into. So if anybody knows the answer to that, we'll uh, help out with some movie passes. 877 692 
1027. Uh, How did I forget our own number? <laughs> it's easy. Now too. you know you're retarded. <laughs> now I'm the Merc baby. <laughs> Oh, that's right. You had a tuna salad mercury sandwich today. Uh, you know, they always bitch about tuna. What could taste better? It's the best. I don't care if a little dolphin or a little mercury gets in there. A little mercury I don't, I don't like. A little dolphin, I'll, I think it just makes it crunchier. The mayonnaise will kill all of that. All right, so here's the question, and uh, we'll give away a pair of movie passes. Uh, looking for the name of the company who was responsible for the mercury poisoning in Taiwan, the famous pick of the mom in bathtub with the daughter. All right, that's what we're looking for is we help someone with their homework. I Rooster just sent in, is it, isn't that Taliban tuna? No. Taliban tuna. <laughs> that Taliban did not do anything. Hey, Fezzy, look who's online and she's coming in tomorrow night. I couldn't be more excited. It's Hot Liz. Hey, Hot Liz. Hot Liz. You better not be being sarcastic, being excited about me coming in. Are you kidding me? Considering I'm all washed up. Oh, you know what? <laughs> oh, boy. You know what? You have to be nice to me today, though. It's my birthday. Oh, oh today's your birthday. Today is my birthday. I just got I out of class. I thought it was tomorrow. Though. Happy birthday, Jackie O. No, but I'm celebrating tomorrow because I just got out of class. All right, we got a little song for you. Oh. I've been waiting for that all day. I was singing it in the shower. Oh, uh, wait. It's a great song, isn't it? I was. I was just excited to call you guys so you could, so I could hear it. I am so excited that you're coming in tomorrow. We will be coming in. We and Mark taking me out to dinner and oh, then we're coming in. Oh, jeez. Not him. We want it to be around you. We don't want him here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, we, we saw him last night. We're excited well, you want to have me, him He was in. there last night. Do so you want me to leave him at home? No. We want him in. He's not hot, Mark. We're gonna we're gonna have a nice time. We're gonna party a little bit. And I'm excited that I get to meet Joe Poo. Yeah, Joe Poo's gonna be in oh, here. And you can smack the taste out of his mouth. It's right? my la it's my last night here. Yeah, this it is might it. be. Yeah, we're done with Joe Poo after tonight. It just didn't work oh, out. Joe, yeah. I wanted to meet you. I'm going on hiatus again. Oh. Another nine months off. He gets yelled at once. He takes nine months off. All right. Well, I'll let you guys go, but I just wanted to hear my song and tell you I'm looking forward till tomorrow night. Happy birthday, honey. And, we um, love you, Are you okay? still doing the pajama thing? Yeah, we're doing a pajama. Make yeah. sure you're a little... What do you normally sleep in? I usually sleep naked, but um, if not, That's I sleep fine. in a pair. That's Bring that in not, with you. I sleep in a um, white beater and a pair of, like, little boys' underoos. That is so effing hot. So do I. <laughs> I am so excited about our slumber party tomorrow night. We're gonna, and this is all for your birthday. It's like a sleepover slumber party. They're you cute. Know, I have little special red, white, and blue Playboy ones to you, wear tomorrow. You know what we'll have? What? Slam books. Nice. <laughs> oh, we're well, gonna find a slam book. <laughs> Slam book. Uh, slam book. We'll have s'mores and we'll just uh, do all kinds of sleepover games. Nice. nice. I, hair hope we, and... I hope we tell ghost stories. Fez, kid, will you do my hair, Fez? Or yeah. <laughs> God. Why do you do the hair on his back? <laughs> Everyone can braid it. That's disgusting. Yeah, well, what do you say? All right, honey, I can't wait until tomorrow night. All right, love you guys. All right, bye-bye. Bye. bye, Hot Liz. That's right, tomorrow on the Run and Fez show, slumber party, all celebrating Hot Liz's birthday. Hey, you know what we'll do? We'll, uh, we'll since uh, Psycho Mark will be here, we'll have a panty raid, chase the girls around. Cool, we can play some Twister. Maybe we turn off all the lights, we do seven minutes in heaven. <laughs> Truth or dare? Truth or dare with those chicks would be great. They can play truth or dare. All right, where's Al the big fag? <laughs> hey, uh, I didn't realize he had changed his name. Yeah, hey, Why uh, don't I ever get the memos? Hold on, Pat thinks he knows the answer to the question. Pat, you're on Run of Fez. Yeah, is it GE? No, I don't think it was GE, was it? GE killed all those people down in Hoboken. Not killed them, poisoned all those people down in Hoboken. Yeah, in but it wasn't too. the uh, mercury poisoning thing. Was it? Uh, Pat, Pat so. you're just naming large corporations hoping to get lucky here. I don't think that's it. Hey, uh, if I knew, if I heard the name, I'd know it. Was it Viacom? Hey, no. <laughs> that's a fine company. Hey, Tim, you're on Ron and Fez? Hi, I think I have the answer. Yeah. Formosa Plastics? That was the name of it, Formosa Plastics. Cool. Al, why can't you get me information like this? <laughs> Very, Actually, very I, good. Had, I was the one who called up with all the uh, lesbian bars that gave that to Al Duke. Yeah, well. All right. 
the, gave them to his mom, and we never heard from her again. The phones, the email, and the instant feedback will always beat the producers. Anything will. All right, thank you, Tim. Hold on, all right, buddy? Got it. We'll Pony give you some Express tickets. could beat the producers. Give them some nice tickets for that. That's we, a damn good question. And we got movie passes. Uh, 20th Century Fox's Shallow How with Jack Black and Gwyneth Paltrow. And also a special screening of 20th Century Fox's new release, Black Knight, starring Martin Lawrence. I can't imagine going to see that. <laughs> We're on the air. Oh, but it should be a good one. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine because I uh, have a bad back and I can't go out. Oh, I understand. Yeah. I see Martin Lawrence, I get a bad back and can't sit down. <laughs> Al Dukes, get in here. Big fag. <laughs> there is no respect for authority right. in this place. Right. He just called you Big Fag. And, and Al, he's, he's your... to be his boss. Yeah, you're his boss. He's your employee. Don't call me that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what are you going to do? All right, who are the girls we got coming in for uh, Hot Liz's birthday slumber party? We have Sweet Melissa. Please, again. F me boobs. What's with the oh, fingers? Well, Isn't that Al? television? <laughs> How uh, um so crazy about that F me boobs? Oh, She's I thought adorable. he was just saying that to Joe Poo no. for calling him fag. Didn't I hear that F me boobs is uh, dating somebody from the uh, board, from the message board? Is it GVAC? GVAC seems like he gets every woman on that board. G dog is what he is. All right, who else out, Dukes? We have Nurse Myra. Oh, oh she's cool. The fabulous Nurse Myra, who. Let's make sure we got a shavers.com around. Right. Okay. She says she'd be willing to shave for us. With her, we'll need plenty of vodka. Because she's Russian? Yeah. Vodka. Poisoned by Chernobyl. All right, here's what I'm reading. Pooter Toot is dating F me boobs. Oh, okay. How incestuous. <laughs> They're all over each other. And we have a new girl that's coming in, Ice Cream Girl. Ice cream girl, all right. So we're gonna ice cream girl, <laughs> stopperism, passing by. So we're gonna make a new friend. A new friend. So I, so when you say a new girl, that isn't just you and drag, is it, Al? No, no, it's what it's okay. uh, an actual fag. girl. <laughs> <laughs> Al, you funny. better, you better put a stop to what? it. Yeah, you have Do got not. to draw a line in the sand. Do not call me big fag. Or Wait. what? Or what? You gotta tell these guys. Or I will I will stop coming down to the lobby and getting you. Yes. <laughs> big fag. <laughs> oh my gosh Al, you better I'll, shut him up. He's your employee. I'll just talk to Jeremy about him. I didn't know. Oh. That's... You're going to the principal. I'll talk to him and see if he can do something you're about re it. You're really my boss? That's right. <laughs> big fag. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> or what? You can't say, or I'll, I'll go tell Jeremy. Or that I'll, doesn't sound authoritative. Or I'll talk to Jeremy to see what it is that I can do. He told me... What he are you, a puss? <laughs> Why don't you slap him with your vagina, you big baby? <laughs> Just start smacking your lips around his head. Why should that sound hot? <laughs> Joe, did you talk to your boss at the pizza delivery place like that? No, this is the first boss I get to treat like this. <laughs> or the uh, at the garage when you're fixing cars? No, I had respect for him, too. I, well, <laughs> I shouldn't be treated that way. Why not? Because I'm... Um, because you're a little... Tell him, you're a lady. And ladies no, shouldn't be treated like that. I'm in charge here. <laughs> Ow, he's laughing at you. This isn't right. It's not right. All right, Mr. Feggeet. <laughs> No, n not even Mr., just Al <laughs> is good. I meant Al the big fag. <laughs> Al, you're not sounding authoritative. Then if you keep it up, I'll fire you. <laughs> I can't imagine that. Why don't you just yell, ooh, I'll give you such a pinch. <laughs> all right, so that's all the girls that are coming in? And then there's uh, another girl that's coming in who wants to put on a fashion show. Nice. That's always okay with me. Do we know her name? Uh, I'm not remembering it right now. But she won tickets to George Carlin, and she wants you to pick out what outfit she should wear. Oh, okay. Yeah. So she's going to bring in her own outfits and fashion for us. Yes, she is. Oh, my God. F me boobs just writes in to me. You don't know how bad I need to play spin the bottle with the girls. You don't know how bad she needs it. We can play spin the fag. How are we going to spin out? I'm not a fag. <laughs> oh.
Can we spin him? Try to put him on his back and twirl. I think he has to be waxed up or something. Oh, oh, oh Al. <laughs> Al, you gotta put a stop to it. I'll talk to him during the commercial. Yeah, why don't you go stand in a circle of guys? <laughs> <laughs> For then target he'll, practice? Then he'll be the circle jerk. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited about this F me boobs thing. Why are you still standing here? Myra back in here. Don't you have somebody to fluff? Oh, Al, stick up for yourself. I don't Which, fluff. Even if it's, anymore. Even not if it's not Never a did. management thing, it's a man-to-man thing. Hey, uh, Aaron. Aaron, you're on our run of Fez. Hello, Aaron. Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah. All right, I think we should just rename the show to uh, Big Gay Al's Radio Show. All right, see that? That's how you lose but I'm power. Not gay. I've never done anything gay. Yet. I'm gay. I'm gay. I'm, I'm gay. I'm just I'm saying gay. what you say when you're drinking. Uh, hey, uh, Aubrey. Aubrey, you're on Rana Fez. Uh, hey, Rana Fez. Um, first of all, Al Dukes, you never had any power, but Joe Poo, I got a name for him. Yeah. Uh, the Fabulous Al Dukes. All right, now <laughs> children are making fun of you, Al. Fabulous Al. <laughs> <laughs> and Joe is laughing like a girl at this little kid. The kids wouldn't do that to my face up here. Or what? We can't have children in the room. I'll tell their parents. They wouldn't do it to my face. This is the problem with you, Al, is that uh, you let yourself get pushed around. And once you don't draw that line in the sand, once you don't take care of business... Everybody treats you that way. Yeah, right. then it's all downhill. You were a having, domino effect. He puts his business in his mouth. <laughs> well, I'll, you I'll, were having a good night <laughs> until you let Joe Poo, who, let's face it, is the rookie of the team, very start evil. wasting you. Yeah, I was having a real bad night till you came in. <laughs> I'll talk to him. He was almost out. After, now we're now we find him adorable. <laughs> after the show, I'm gonna meet with him. Or me? what? I'm gonna meet with him to discuss this. Discuss it now. Well, now he's being goofy. But I'm going to seriously sit down with him. And do what? He's going to have fisticuffs with me. Tell him that's not how we... And try to make out with him? What? No. Just tell him that's not how we talk to each other. How do we? Apparently it is. Hey, is this what you're going to tell him? How are you? Hey, I'm a Thanks for asking. This is the Al Duke song. considered I couldn't be better. I'm a fan. I'm feeling super. No, nothing fucks me. The gay Al, everything is super when you're... Don't you think I look cute in this hat? Yes, you do, Al. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Hey, E, you're on Run and Fest. Hey, hey what's E. What's going on, guys? Run and Fest? Yeah. yeah, what can we do for you? Uh, that'll spin in, uh, playing in Spin the Bottle. Why don't you play the uh, Spin the Dildo? All right, you see that, Al? Now look what's happened. Yeah, you have a detachable one, don't you? Hey, you guys, let me tell you something. Yeah. I'm glad you guys back to the gold show. That's the way you got to keep it on. Got to get back to the old show? Well, you know, with Joe Poo and the rest of the gang. All right, yeah, thank oh, okay. you very much. Right. And we the whole Joe... hee gang. Everybody but uh, Al. <laughs> what do you expect people to call you? You're always asking guys to play swords with you. <laughs> I've never asked a guy to do that. Just... Yes, you have. Ow. I think I heard you say that. I heard you say to one of our male guys, the chocolate guy. He says, Philip! He says to Philip, you want to play swords? I go, Al, would you quit challenging the guest to a fencing duel? And you know what? Here's the it's funny disgusting. thing. Disgusting. We never book guests. Al books a guest, a guy who brings chocolates for everybody. <laughs> like, what the F? I'm so weirded out, but I'm thinking it's not this guy's fault. What does he know? Hey, uh, Jeff. Jeff, you're on Run of Fez. What's going on, guys? Hey, buddy. Hey, Jeff. I have a spy report for you. Spy report. Spy report. Oh, what do you got? Uh, Al Douche is gay. Really? <laughs> yeah. Big. I'm, I'm straight. Peace. Yeah. I'm gay. I'm not gay. I'm straight. Big I'm gay. Big. I'm straight. I'm I can't gay. tell the recording. I'm gay. I'm straight. I'm gay. Make up your mind. Now you're arguing <laughs> with yourself. Hey, Will. Will, you're on our of Fez. Hello, Will. Whoa. What happened? Oh, are you on a horse? Yeah, apparently. Um, Al, it's time to give it up, man. You all respect, you'll never gain the respect of He has of given anybody. it up to every guy at the station. You should, just, Al, just go into a different line of work, man. Become a postal worker. All right, here's the thing. Now you got Fez laughing in your face because of what Joe Poo says. I'm sorry, that's a funny joke. But anybody who ever hung on one corner in their in their life, Al, realizes that this is the thing. You got to protect yourself here. 
Well, none of these things he's saying is true. I will protect myself. I will put a condom on. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Al, do you want to see if you can just take him down right here? Do you I, think you could wrestle him to the floor? I could probably wrestle him to the floor. <laughs> Big fag. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, don't start doing a gay wrestling. No, league. I wouldn't do. I'm not doing anything gay. I'm gay. Hey, hey Chris, Chris, Greco Roman, heavy on the Greco. Hey guys, how you doing? Hi, Chris. Uh, yeah, I think that maybe Al should uh, team up with Kenny Allen because now they're both telling. No, Al's the gay one. <laughs> Is Al the one who produces shows? I'm the one who produces the shows. I'm telling Jeremy. I know that sounded awful. I just wanted to report it to you know the, the upper management people. That's all. Go for it, spunk recycler. Oh, <laughs> now you just got called spunk dumpster. I'll mention that. <laughs> This is all going in my report. It's on tape. Bring it to him. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Joe is the kid. You've got to be able to protect yourself against the kid. Not in the way you do with other little kids. <laughs> why you not? better not, Al. Oh, I wow. I don't. Al, why don't you knock that Chevy hat off his head Okay. that we've been looking at for three weeks? Ooh, not the earphones. <laughs> oh, look at he's What a girl slap you just did. <laughs> Knocking my Chevy hat off, huh? <laughs> How'd you like to eat board? I don't want to eat board. Oh, that's getting them out. Or a carpet. Or vagina. <laughs> hey, uh, Rick, Rick, you're on Run of Feds. Why I said carpet. Yeah, Al, if Joe's getting you mad, you could try to, like, scratch his eyes out or pull his hair like a little girl. Defend yourself. I don't really fight. <laughs> With men. Have you ever been in a fight? No, I have not. I, I'm not saying you even have to fight Joe Poo, but you have to stand up for him at least. Right. Intellectually. Well, I, the, things I'm gay. the things he's saying is not true, so there's no nothing to argue <laughs> back on just to say that it's not true. You're a big fag. It's true. <laughs> That's not true. Never, it's true. Never been with a guy. Oh, now I know why you guys are never on Meet the Press. These great debates. I never been with a guy in the last hour. Is that what you're saying, Al? No. It's been oh, an that's, hour? No, that's I'm not saying, much of an argument. No, I'm saying I never was with a guy. Who was here in the last hour? <laughs> oh, Phil. Phil, the chocolate guy. You should have huge muscles with all the protein you're taking in. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> He's on a protein diet. <laughs> oh, Al, stop it. Gotta take my pill in syringe form. Hey, uh, Michael, you're on, I'm on a fez. Hey, guys, why don't you check Al Dukes' uh, fingers? If his uh, ring finger is longer than his index finger, that's usually a good sign that he's uh, he could be gay. That thing is way longer. <laughs> ring, ring finger has to be longer than index? That's what they're saying. They said it's not a guarantee, but in Al's case, I think it will be. Oh, my gosh. You want to check him? The ring finger's leaving the index finger in the dirt. The Al dirt hole, anyway. All right, thanks, Mike. Al, bend over and show him the little t uh, the little uh, toll booth you have there with the guy collecting tolls. Are you saying his ass has easy pass? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> the length of your fingers has nothing to do with you being gay. It's just how much you can pleasure yourself. Yeah, you were stretching that one all the way up there. <laughs> hey, uh, Ray, Ray, you're on uh, Rana Fez. Hey, Ray. I'm defending for uh, Al Dukes. Thank I think you. Joe Poo sounds like a teenager Guilford Godfrey. Guilford. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go on a date with him? Ray, what would you do if you were in Al's shoes right now? You know what I would do? I'd get some cheese. <laughs> Joe Poe, you're I giving look, me look. a heart attack. You, why don't you have uh, lines like that? Call him something. Yeah, say something back to him. You're like a teenage Gilbert Gottfried. All right, that was just <laughs> sad, you idiot. <laughs> don't pick that he one. He told you you were on a protein diet. And called you a spunk recycler. There's a little protein in your mustache still. <laughs> oh. And none of it is true, what he's saying. I. <laughs> wow, big comment. Good one. I don't know why you two are arguing with you, y each other. You knocked his hat off, and the two of you look like you're in a Phil Collins look-alike competition. <laughs> look at those haircuts. All right, uh, John, you're on uh, Ron Fez. Hi, John. John. Hey, Ron Fez. Hey, buddy. I was with the chocolate guy, Joe Poo. Yeah. What do you got, a chocolate starfish? Ah! <laughs> oh, you know what it is. Don't, don't look confused. I don't know what that is. <laughs> King starfish. I'm gay. I'm gay. You are. Oh. Here's your theme. Sexual chocolate. Sexual chat. 
Uh, thanks for having me at the chocolate show. <laughs> I'm right here for you. Milk, milk, lemonade. Round the corner, fudge is made. There's our bouncing English style. <laughs> hey, um, here's somebody that'll help you out, Al. Hi, you're on Ron Fez. Hi, who's this? What's going on, guys? The jobber! It's the jobber! Run! Hey, Al, douche. <laughs> He, you're a little junk smuggler. That's what you are, Al Douche. Where are you smuggling to, Al? I, um, I, I don't smuggle anything. Yeah, shut your mouth. Oh, for you're a change. The pussy I ever saw in my life. Al, this is a kid that's doing this to you now. He wouldn't say it to my face. I would say it in your face because I know you wouldn't do anything because you're a big pussy. I'd say it, Al. I'd have sex with you. No, I would not. <laughs> you little Can't kid toucher. Bring your kid touching elsewhere. Ow. I don't do that. What, then what do you do? I have a normal life. Normal. You have a normal life yes. touching kids. Normal for a game, eh? You know, I would love to know who's training who around here. Is Friday Fright training you, Al? Because you're sounding more and more like him every night. No, he. I don't... You he, know what Friday said? Al's my bitch. Oh, really? Did he really? Friday that. fight the intern. He'll be in tomorrow night. He would not say that. How's my bitch? I carry him around. He he would definitely not say that. Yes, he did. Al douche. I have his he. I have his respect. Friday <laughs> fight owned you, Al. Al, uh, you're not gonna stick up to the jobber either. Big pussy. He's just a little kid. <laughs> you you crying in the corner with your pants off and mascara rolling down your face is respect. <laughs> He's in the fetal position. <laughs> now, is it true Jobber is actually part of Joe Poo's Big Brother program? Absolutely. Sounds like you're training him, Joe Poo. All right, Jobber. We'll see you. All right. Thanks, Later, Jobber. guys. Later, Jobber. What's going on, guys? Hey, uh, Kiami. Kiami, you're on uh, Rana Fuzz. Hey, Kiami. Hello? Yeah, go ahead, buddy. Yeah, I was wondering if... Uh... Uh, he was uh, packing fudge with a chocolate guy before the show. No, I was not. You sure? Yes. Mm. Okay. Yeah, say hello to Kiami. Hey, Scott. I think that answers one more chocolate joke. Hey, Scott. You're on Rana Fez. Hey, Scott. I was just wondering if instead of the fabulous Al Dukes, we could just call him Fabu for short. Fabu. <laughs> hello, <Yeah>. Fabu. <laughs> Fabu. Fabu. I'm gay. Fabu, get in here. <laughs> I'm gay. See ya. I'm gay. Al, now we've known you for what, nine months? Yes. What's the furthest you've been with a girl in nine months? The nine months that we've known you. Uh, well, for the nine months I've known me, not too far, because I just moved back up here. Nine to months Jersey. ago. Yes, nine months ago. Is there any reason that you're not with a girl? I'm gay. I'm gay. Well, that answers that. No, I'm, I'm straight. I just, and then these work hours are strange. Because you really can't go out at night. Because we work nights, so. You work here at night? <laughs> you know, you're here. I got here. completely caught off guard. You could actually go out, take in a dinner and a movie with a nice gal, and right. come back, and I wouldn't have noticed. Hey, uh, Jamie. Jamie, you're on uh, Rana Fez. Hello, huh? Jamie. Yeah. What can we do for you? I want to go on a date with Al to prove the sexuality. All right, Jamie, uh, tell us a little something about yourself. Well, I go to Rock University. Uh-huh. I'm a biology major. And finally we get some bio I was Finally, we get some horny biology majors around here. <laughs> That's all we've been asking <laughs> for. What? Uh -huh. Al, what do you think? She, I, and how quick would you have sex? First date? First second I see him, I'll rip his clothes off. There's nothing down there. He's as smooth as a Ken doll. <laughs> He's a smooth Ball. criminal. How old are you? <laughs> Why are How you boring her? Yes. How old are you? I'm, I'm 20. My birthday was yesterday. She's but a little I need a little you. birthday present. And you've been with how many guys? What? How many guys have you slept with? Al um, wants to sleep with about them. About 32. <laughs> Can he get their I numbers? have a lot of experience. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that seems a little to be a lot for someone who's twenty. He just wants to sniff you. Yeah, see if well, you can pick up I lost my virginity <laughs> when I was twelve. To who? 
How, Two? Yeah, how'd that happen? Uh, well, it was a college guy. It was a bicycle accident. Yeah, oh, no. I went to one of those she college parties, you know, and I got drunk and things right, got out of hand. 12. And then after that, I just became a nympho. Yeah. Yeah. She sounds great, Al. What do you say? No, she's been with 32 guys at 20 years old. That sounds uh, more guys like, than you. Like a I'm little very more clean. Than normal. Why don't you want to do this? I'm not a I'm dirty gay. girl. I'm Unless gay. you want me to be. Jamie, ha have you ever seen Al? Have I ever seen him? I've seen him in my dreams. I'm gay. Wow. I'm gay. <laughs> and he's very sexy. I don't think he has any balls. I have balls. I have balls. Well, that's Get enough. your balls <laughs> out. <laughs> All right, do you want to be with her, Al? No, she seems slutty. <laughs> she seems slutty. I'm not slutty. It's just that I really want you. I have, I have fantasies about you. You're way too feminine for him. Oh come on. I'm sorry, honey. Is there any way you could grow a pod? I'm gay. <laughs> what? Sorry, Jamie. You lost that on the smooth criminal. <laughs> the smooth criminal. That's no part of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we gotta take a break here. All right, eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. We're the Run Fest show. Oh, that's weird. We're the Run Fest stereo show. You've been struck by a smooth criminal. Run and Fest. One zero two seven W N E W. I thought maybe the fabulous Al Dukes and Joe Pooh could make up and slow dance to this song. I guess not. We're Run and Fest. I'm gay. I'm gay. I'm gay. I'm gay. I'm straight. You're a big fag. <sighs> oh, these two, how they go round and round. You know, we talked about couples from hell tonight. Right. We got a couple. <laughs> Joe pulling out. Hey, uh, Fezzi, we are doing a parody song contest. We've never done one of these mm -hmm. before. Most other shows have. Uh-huh. So, you know. This is uh, I Want My MP3 Song Parody Contest. Just looking for the best parody song. Now, you can email the MP3 versions of your songs to Ron and Fez at WNEW.com. Or you can mail them. Here's the address. Ron and Fez Show, WNEW, 888 7th Avenue, 10th Floor, New York, New York, 10106. <coughs> now, Al Dukes, is there going to be a place where they can find this address online? Yeah, it's on uh, WNEW.com. Right. But if you could send it by MP3, that would be great because that would be keeping with the contest. Sure. Or just send that in care of my big gay heart, Al Dukes, <laughs> at WNEW. I'm gay. I'm gay. I'm gay. You are. Al went to a special school where they had a prom for gay kids. That's nice. Dress it tux. Now, when... Uh, <laughs> Both. He he went he went in a dress and then tucked and then tucked it. <laughs> oh, you take her. Hey, the uh, take her. I didn't go to my prom at all. He, really? No. Why? No guy would go with you. No, I didn't have a girlfriend at the time. Or now? You couldn't just ask someone to go. No, I was very. That shy. didn't stop you from going to uh, Niagara Falls <laughs> with three other couples. Yeah, as the fifth wheel, fifth wheel tour, two thousand one. Would you hope they, they'd have sex in front of you and maybe get some man chowder on your face? <laughs> oh. No, we stayed in separate rooms. Yeah, okay. Separate bedroom, separate boss, separate bedroom, separate boss. <laughs> All right, Al. Hey, uh, here's gonna, the person who is going to uh, judge the contest is uh, Billy mm -hmm. Staples from Airsick. Uh, Al, you haven't brought us any new Airsick songs lately. No, I've listened to some of them, and I don't know. I just wasn't none of them done the show tunes. Remember what you learned from the consultant: you are not supposed to judge comedy or work quality. Yeah, remember when the consultant said you're not funny? Yes, but these or interesting or bright <laughs> or human. Remember when the consultant called you a big fag? <laughs> <laughs> that was in his note. No. The consultant did oh, not Jim. call me. He that. did say this though on your vacation: separate bedroom, separate <laughs> balls, separate bedroom, separate balls. <laughs> we found out. Uh, we looked this over, and you got a big fag running things. When's the yeah. cons When's the consultant coming back? I think uh, if you tried to hit on him and chased him out of here. No, I have balls. 
I'm straight and he's a married man. Right, but that's <laughs> never stopped you before. Sounds like a sitcom to me. He said you tried to give him a reach around. What's that even mean now? I don't understand. I did not do that. Oh, you disgusting little man whore. <laughs> Hey, Dan from Hoboken says, was Aunt Madeline busy on house prom night? <laughs> Anyone who remembers Aunt Madeline? <laughs> nice reference, Dan from Hoboken. All right, 877-692-1027. We were going to introduce the judge of the competition, right? right? Uh, all right, first Joe wants to say something about Al. Hey, Joe, you're on uh, Rana Fez. Hey, Joe. Come on, guys. Take it easy with Al. Okay. You know, I'm here to defend him because okay. it's just not right. There's been enough gay bashing in this town. Yeah, that's Al, true. Al, you fag. You're getting beat up by kids, man. Defend yourself. Say something. Do something. Prove your masculinity. I told him. You told him with, <laughs> with such. You told him with about as much effort as a pansy. Hit him with your purse. Do something. I'm going to talk to Jeremy tomorrow. <laughs> You're pathetic. That's going to accomplish a lot no, tonight. What? Got, what are you going to say to Jeremy? That he is the new guy. And yes. shouldn't be saying fag and stuff like that. And now I'm going to wax my bikini line. <laughs> <laughs> Do not wax yourself and in Jeremy's office. Al, how do you look at yourself in the mirror and call yourself a man? How? I am a man. <sighs> that doesn't help the situation. I can't tell what's a drop and what he's actually saying. You got as much testosterone as a baby girl. That's not true. That's not much. Do something. Come on, get mad. I'm... I don't get mad. I go and I, I talk. I get even. Well, you're on the radio. <laughs> I get glad. You're yourself with your tongue. He's you're, comfortable. You're going to go, go tell mommy on him? No, oh, I'll talk to Jeremy. Throw a mud pie at him. Do something. Come on. Yeah, come Alan, on. Get your boyfriend to beat me up. I don't have a boyfriend. <laughs> Anymore. <laughs> so get the guy you're sleeping with to do something to him. Al, what's Jeremy going to do? You're going to go into Jeremy's office tomorrow and do what? And say, Let's Joe, go. who's the new guy on the show, was on the air calling me fag. What can I do to stop that? And now can we play swords? <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do it at all. And they're going to say, all right. Uh, Jeremy's going to say, did uh, Ron Bennington stop Joe Poo at all? No, he did not. Was Fez enjoying it when Joe Poo was doing this? Yes, he was. All right. Then I say we go with it. That's going to be Jeremy's response. That's plenty. All right. Thanks, Joe. All right, guys. Thanks, Joe. All right, let's uh, get some Air 6 songs. See you later, big fag. <laughs> that means Al's leaving, for those of you that can't see what's going on in the room. 877-692-1027. All right, here's something from Air 6. Ooh, you ugly bearded one, your time has come. We think it's about time you died, Osama. Ooh, we want you to arrive, dead or alive. There is not a place that you can hide. Osama, camel, hoof and brick, such a dick Time to say goodbye when you see Allah Please tell him that we all said hi Die, 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 die Woo! Die, die, Osama Come a little closer, huh? Oh, will ya, huh? Shove this warhead up your ass and die, Osama Hiding in Afghanistan, the Taliban Soon you will be running out of time, Osama Camel hump and trick, such a dick Time to say goodbye when you see Allah Please tell him that we all say hi Die, 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 die. Woo! Die, die, Osama Fezzi, die, Osama I talked to my old man today, right? Yep, I haven't talked to him in a while he wants to bet me that Bin Laden will be dead by the time I get there for Thanksgiving. Wow. I, know. Said, I go, you don't have any money. <laughs> I'll bet you the things you bought me. Right. What do I do? Take something off the tab? <laughs> the New York Post headline today, on the run. Bin Laden on the run. All right, that's Die Osama by Airsick. You can check out them out online at airsick.net. All right, uh, all right. So you're going to judge the contest, are you, Billy? Staples now. What makes a uh, good parody song as opposed to a bad? Because they all sound the same to me. Bad. Well, <clears throat> one of the best things you're going to have to do is find the proper song, keep it brief, and get to the joke right away. All right. So you got another one for us to show us? Sure. We did a couple of Thanksgiving ones. So I think uh, Hawk has them <laughs> queued up. Oh, all right. <laughs> wow. So keep it brief, right? Yeah. Like the 14-minute Seinfeld one you did? Well, there are exceptions. <laughs> Always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, 
does it take so long? Why does it take so long, yo? This Thanksgiving meal, I want to spit it. Am I the only one who still isn't done? I will not eat it. I'm so naive to think I wouldn't eat from this uncooked bird. But in reality, what shame to your whole gender with this offender. If I could tell you, put the gravy in a blender. Hey, it's got love. 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 Hey, it's got loves. I hate the way you cook turkey. Come on, turkey. Come on. It's tough as a beef jerky, so stick it up yo. Yeah. Stick it up yo. Yeah. Stick it up yo. Yeah. Stick it up yo. I hate the way you cook turkey. Come on, turkey. Come on. It's tough as a beef jerky, so stick it up yo. Yeah. Stick it up yo. Yeah. Stick it up yo. Yeah. Stick it up yo. Okay, I want everyone to know that your party song doesn't have to be about poultry, does it? No. Okay, it could be any topic. Yeah, and it's usually if you can keep the hook of the of the song somewhere very similar to your parody, it makes it funnier. If it sounds very similar, or you know, if the couple of the words are the same, it's usually uh, a lot better that way. Okay, so when someone's hearing your parody, they're like, "Why didn't I think of that? It seems so obvious." Like even with the chumps in the song, it goes, I'm a chump, hey, we went, hey, it's got lumps, hey. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get the whole parody thing. And stick it in your yams? Is that what it was? Stick it in your yams. <laughs> oh, I should have thought of that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, here's I just heard Rudy laugh down the block and stick it in your yams. Rudy must be 40 yards away from us, and I heard him scream. And the big guffaw. That's the soundproof yeah. door that I always tell everyone about. All right, here's another Thanksgiving one, I guess. Yes, this is another Thanksgiving one. Pie, 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 pie. <laughs> My pants are fitting tight. I couldn't need another bite. Thanksgiving meals are out of sight. I can't eat no more. You fed me endlessly with mashed potatoes and turkey. Stuffing gravy, you can hear my stomach groan. I doubt that I fit through that door. It ain't no lie. I, I just have room for one thing more. I want pie, pie, pie. Apple or pumpkin will always do. I always have room for a slice or two. Lemon meringue, I will have to try. I want pie, pie, pie. Coconut custard is some good stuff. Keep it coming, I'll say when I've had enough. Pecan and cherry, time to go and buy some more pie, pie, pie. Airsick, pie, pie, pie. Now, would you suggest when you pick a song to parody, use an old classic, something everybody knows, or something more current like this? Something usually topical, or if it's not a current song, one that is a classic. All right, Joe, uh, you said you're uh, writing a song? You're going to write your own parody song? Yeah, I'm working on something. What's it called? It's going to be original. It's going to be called Al's the Big Fag. <laughs> <laughs> what oh. is that going to go to? I like this Al. Any, come in here, Al Dukes. I think that's going to be done to Papa's Got a Brand New Bag. <laughs> Stop plucking your eyebrow and come in here. We're talking about you. Your eyebrow. <laughs> I have two eyebrows. No, you don't. Uh, would you sing uh, back up on his song? What's the name of the song going to be again? Al's a big fag. <laughs> no, I'm not going to sing back up on that. Al's you're a fag, gonna... fag, 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 fag. <laughs> Joe, you're not going to be able to sing it if you can't quit laughing. I'm gay. That's right. the backup vocals? We've already laid down the tracks. All right, John has a uh, question of uh, for Billy Staples. John. Hey, John. Hey, my friends, how you doing? You're on with the judge of the I Want My MP3 song parody contest, Billy Staples. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm new to the song parody business, but right. I got, they got to be topical, right? Yeah. They got to be short to the point, right? right? Don't they have to be funny? <laughs> See, uh, obviously not. <laughs> No, these are funny, but in no. a different way, right? You know, funny, I'm clever, and laughing. funny is as fa funny says. Sometimes the uh, picking the right song that right. goes with something is is extremely clever in its own way, and that is, in itself is humorous. And I suggest anybody, if they really want to do it, do it right. Go out and, and when you pick the song you want, go to the karaoke store, get yourself a clean karaoke bed instead of trying to do it over an existing track and cover the vocals. Interesting, Fez. Oh, nice, a uh, nice little hint there. Don't try to eliminate the vocals yourself. Because Maybe I, I, I'll go to a gun store and shoot myself. In the eye. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to win you an MP3 player. Because when you eliminate the vocals, it also takes out usually some of the bass and the drums, and it sounds hollow. Uh huh. And your stuff never sounds hollow. Let's I mean, do another air sing. 
may not be funny, but it no, doesn't I don't sound know. hollow. I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't know yeah. music. So I just wanted to make sure about that. We got another one? I don't know what ever sounds hollow. Huh? Can that possibly be right? There's a song about Sony PlayStation 2? Yeah, it's from last Christmas. We don't want to hear that. <laughs> sure. Let's see what was big last Christmas. Hawk, Some oldies. Hawk's reading the CD and he sees PlayStation. I'll go there. Yeah, the shortcut. There's a bunch on the uh, Topple Cobble. You got new ones on the shortcut. All right, Topple stuff. Cobble. That's like something that, one. that, you know, my dad would love. Okay. Come on. As he hopes to win this bet. Come on, $20. You don't want to bet? <laughs> no, not on whether a man's going to be killed or not in a week. <laughs> In the Afghan capital, the Taliban sure has got its hands full. The planes bomb you all night. The planes now come in daylight. We hear you say that your cause is divine. Even Allah thinks you've lost your mind. You can run, but your ass will find. We'll get rid of you and your kind. A smart bomb. But don't look up, here comes some more Double cobble, the place is a mess Double cobble, the bombs are success Double cobble, the city's a glow Hot damn, I love it so Alright, so Whee! there you go I love that one now, a lot of your songs get played on all different kinds of stations, right? Yeah, we... Um, so what would that be aimed at? A rock station or... Mostly Top 40. Top 40 is on, where your stuff See, is. that one is was kind of a rarity because it wasn't a real classic song. It was popular enough and it was a hard sell on it because it wasn't like a really big hit. But it's damn catchy. Yeah, that's the whole thing. That's what I was talking about before, like getting the right song for an idea. I mean, you know, Rebel Rebel, Topple Cobble, it just, you know, sometimes that in itself is, is woody enough. Uh, to go by. But the one thing I do want to say, when you're doing a parody, in the first two lines of the song, get to the point of what you're talking about right away so people know what the parody is about. So if you are doing a song about Thanksgiving, let the audience know that in the first couple lines. Yeah, you don't want them waiting till like the fourth or fifth line to uh, even have a clue what the parody or what the joke is going to be about. Okay, let's see if we can tell what this one's about. Dukes, the smooth criminal, loves this one. This is his absolute favorite. Two beers last night, he was singing it on the street, so I knew he was somewhat hammered if he's singing air six songs. Let me ask you this. What's the name of yours, uh, Joe Poole, your song? <laughs> okay, ready? <laughs> yeah. It's called Al's a Big Fag. <laughs> no, see, that I think could win. Have you worked on... Because it's topical. Right, yes. And everyone can relate to it. Have you worked on anything more than just the title? No, I'll probably go back to Alice Prom song and use one of them. <laughs> oh, okay. Alice a big fag. That's a great song. He likes it to uh, oh, Bon Jovi. Oh, the title. That's where they all start. 877-692-1027. It's the I Want My MP3 Song Parody Contest. Billy Staples is going to judge... Email us your MP3 versions of your parody songs to Ron and Fez. That's R O N A N D F E Z at W N E W dot com, or you can mail them to us too. Tony, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, hey Ron and Fez, how are you? Yeah. Hi, Tony. Hey, Billy Staples. Yo. Sometimes you take like a classic song like you're saying, and you do a parody to it, and mm. it ruins the song. Like some of these songs are great, but then I hear your parody, and it's like, oh, get it off. No. I want to hear the real song. Well, <laughs> it's not a rock station anymore, dude. Oh, I know it's not. <laughs> no, a but you're saying the song itself. Yeah, rocking. it does ruin songs for me too. Can I hear songs now? I I sing the wrong no, lyrics now. What I'm now. saying is, well, yeah. right, real quick, if I had the chance to get on the radio and sort of sell myself and tell my uh, what I'm doing, would I want to say that I did parodies? This is what you want to tell people. What you, this is the one thing you want to tell. No, you you guys sell these life. all over the place, right, oh, uh, yeah. Billy? We sell them uh, across what the you country. Want to tell America that you do parodies. Yeah, I'm very proud of what I do. They come. Air Six been around for five years now doing what we do, so I'm very proud You're of it. You're making a living at it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you were doing this long before you ever met us. You did right. it for the O&A show. Any other stations here in town? Um, nothing really in town. No. But, uh, from, uh, there's about 200 stations across the country. We have an affiliate in Britain and one in Australia, too. 
And how many of their uh, songs uh, do they take from you, like, uh, a week? Um, we do about 5 to 10 a week. We average about 85 to 90 percent. Really? Yeah. Wow. Now, in Britain, do you have to just work with, like, Oasis songs? <laughs> no, we just give them whatever we have. It goes to British Armed Forces Radio. Uh-huh. In Northern Ireland. And you never, yeah, so they might, so some of the guys in the front might be hearing this. Yeah. All right, so this is why we're doing this uh, parody song contest, Fuzzy. We're doing it for the boys overseas. Hey, Rich, you're on Fez. Hey, Rich. Yeah, hi, I'd like to ask, did you put all the uh, Air Sick songs on foundrymusic.com so no one can find them? You know, it is hard to find your way around that foundry music. <laughs> no argument there. I couldn't even find them. Anytime we want to look or hear something, listen to something. Right. You know, they go, oh, it's on foundrymusic.com. We're like, how? Huh. huh? Could we get a tour guide? Like, how the, holy the hell grail? can you even find it? <laughs> Other thing, uh, one uh, last word of advice. Fast is always better than slow. What's that mean? Song-wise. If you're doing oh, an a up song, tempo? an up-tempo song is always better than a ballad or something. Um, I see. So, Joe, Pooh, what, what is the name of your parody song, your entry? It's called Al's a Big Fag. All right, Al, you don't, better learn to protect yourself. Don't make that a ballad. Right. Unless it's a power ballad, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Just go like, what do you want it to never say goodbye? No, I don't want him to record Al it. Al Dukes is a fag. <laughs> Al Dukes is a yeah, fag. Yeah, maybe we could do it to one of your Bon Homo songs. I don't want it to be in the contest. I've got some as that. It will be. Trust me, big fag. Billy, you can't help. You're the judge. No, I have beds. That's all. I yeah. have I have uh, karaoke beds for him. Hey, uh, Jay, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Jay. Hey, what's up, boys? Yeah. Man, first of all, man, awesome to meet all of you, including Joe Poo. But I got to remind Dukes here. Uh, Joe poo has been doing his toilet shout-outs and the night calls back in the day. He's yeah, that's right. Joe Dukey. That's right, jo Al. So maybe you are a big fag. <laughs> But I measure up the wit. Oh my God! I was. You're, you're in a league way out of your league. So yeah. He'll rip you up. I was here for nine months and I didn't hear from him at all. Don't get me wrong. I love you, Duke. You're you're so pathetic. You're great to listen to. You know. Aww, cool. that is nice. It's like the retarded kid that everyone loves. Hey, Rich, you're running feds. Now they're all doing it, Al. Al. Yeah. Al. Yes. Okay. <laughs> 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 He's right. Oh, uh, we got to get going already, don't we? Yeah, if Hawk's got a date or something. I don't know. Hawk, don't rush us out of here early. He is shoving us out the door. All right, we're riding fest. We will be back tomorrow. Slumber party and Hot Liz's birthday. Hot Liz, she is so effing hot. I'm so excited. So tomorrow night is her night, and we'll be back tomorrow at 7 o'clock right after Opie and Anthony. Yeah. See ya. 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 See ya